Have you ever felt your nerves sabotage your ability to communicate effectively, to speak coherently? If so, you're not alone. Here's what you need to do. Not just take a deep breath beforehand. You need to think in advance what you want to say. Focus on one idea at a time and do not rush. Don't get ahead of yourself. And good morning. Hi, I'm TJ Walker. This is the TJ Walker Success Channel. I forgot to record that. Wow. We're going to have to do that one again. Folks, we are here. Uh, hi, friends on TikTok. Uh, we're going to do that one again. Uh, this is sort of a workshop in progress. And we're making short form TikTok, YouTube, social media videos. I'm going to do that one over because I forgot to hit record. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like nerves right before speaking cause you to sabotage how well you come across, make you less than coherent? If so, you're not alone. This is a completely normal human experience. So the solution is not just to take a deep breath, but to really think in advance, what do you want to say? Focus on one thing at a time. Don't try to memorize a whole speech. Okay. That's, that's our opening there. And we're going to use that as an on-demand short form video. And Bercito, thanks for joining us. Rini, thanks for joining us, Jay. And Ben, my colleague overseeing our production, make sure we post the link to StreamYard, not only on YouTube, the YouTube community tab, and our live stream on StreamYard, but if you could post it in our TikTok. Those of you joining us on TikTok, <clears throat> thank you for starters. Number one. Number two, I would love to hear your questions and comments on anything related to communication skills. Number three, I'd love to have you join me right here on screen, have a conversation, ask your questions, be a part of a conversation. All you have to do is click the link that my colleague Ben has posted, I believe under my name, on my TikTok account. So you'll, you'll see that in the stream of comments right there on the TikTok Live. So you can join us there. We're going to be hopping right in today, making short form video. I typically make and post two short form videos a day, one long form, typically six, seven, eight, 10 minute long how-to tutorial on some aspect of communication skills. And we do that for YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, basically all the social media platforms. So we're doing it here live. So I'm bringing you here into my workshop, not just showing you the finished product where everything is perfect and seamless. You see mistakes like you saw right here at the beginning of the show today, where I had to do the thing over again because I forgot to hit one button on my mixer where it records it in 4k. <clears throat> so I see a funny TikTok has joined us, Master Scott, Donna House, and others. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're simulcasting on StreamYard, on TikTok, YouTube, and every other social media platform. So if you want to see kind of the full range, the full studio, the different angles, and let me guarantee that I see your questions, come on over to YouTube or at least click the link to StreamYard that is posted below. Or let's see, I'm going to scroll up here and make sure that we got this. Ben, were we able to post into TikTok yet our StreamYard connection because I'm not seeing it. Is it not letting us do that, Ben? So, uh, Ben, come on and just join me on screen for a minute. So we're still trying to figure out all the technology or we've been live streaming now for a couple of months, working out the kinks in our new studio here, making some improvements. And Ben, does does TikTok not allow me as the owner of the account to post a link outside TikTok? Are they trying to make sure nobody leaves TikTok? Is that the basic situation? No, I'm unable to see the live. Since it's not created on, on my phone here, so I'm unable to see that live you're on mm -hmm. at the moment on TikTok. Well, I'm showing that we're live, and I'm seeing well, it looks like dozens and dozens of our friends on TikTok are joining us live right now. So it is live and there's no way for you to go in through the virtual phone of my, yes. my account. 
it's not it's not coming live on your account here. So um, I well, think you can only post it from that account. Uh, Donna just posted the link to your your YouTube is TJ Walker Success. If you go to YouTube and just type in TJ Walker Success, you'll find me. And the actual URL is youtube.com slash at TJ Walker Success. You'll find it there. And it and it's on my profile too. Although I don't know if it's on my TikTok profile. Apologies for that. But Don, if you have questions, I'll try to see them here in my phone, but I'm mostly looking at a larger computer screen right here in front of me, a big screen where I can see questions being posted by people on every major social media platform as we're doing that. So, oh, and Donna says it is posted there. So again, if you're on TikTok, you want to ask me a question, I might see it if you post it on TikTok, but I absolutely will see it if you join us on StreamYard or on YouTube. You can see my YouTube account in my profile right there on TikTok. So thanks for doing that. And NSR says, good morning. TJ, where are you located? I am in South Florida, in Palm Beach County, in a village called Delray Beach, Florida, in the United States on the East Coast. So let us know where you're from. We always have such a, a fantastic international eclectic crowd, typically always having People come in from India, other parts of Asia, Africa, South America, Europe, North America, pretty much everywhere. Those of you joining for the first time, I'm TJ Walker. This is the TJ Walker Success Channel. This channel is all about helping you become more successful by becoming better at your communication skills and improving your confidence in your communication skills. That's what we're about. And I answer questions try to demonstrate best practices, give you tips right here. And uh, Ben, I'll let you uh, tend to other matters now. And this is where I bring you into my workshop. So you see me kind of behind the scenes from different angles, making social media content related to communication skills. You see the rough drafts, you see the mistakes, you see the mess ups. Sometimes you see a second or third take. This content is then put together and molded into finished product, finished videos, short form and long form videos with B-roll and sound effects and graphics and all that posted on this YouTube channel. And my friend Luke has joined in and signed on. Luke, good to see you. Thanks so much. Again, open invitation. If you want to come on screen <clears throat> today or really any day, more than happy to have you on. We are going to start having guests frequently on this program, internationally renowned experts on various aspects of communication, not just public speaking, but people who are body language experts, small talk experts, experts on speaking in the boardroom, experts on pitching new businesses, experts on creating world-class PowerPoint slides, experts on negotiation. So we're really going to open this up and create what I hope to be the, the world's largest forum on a daily basis, on a live basis, where people get together and learn about communication skills. That's what it, I'm all about. That's what we're trying to do here and having some fun in the process. <clears throat> okay, so I just did one short form video right at the beginning. What I'm what I do here is I answer questions that you post sometimes on TikTok, sometimes on YouTube, Facebook, other places. Sometimes people email me questions. Sometimes they come on live and we have conversations and it stimulates a question. And then other times I get questions culled from the internet courtesy of ChatGPT and artificial intelligence. So I have some questions right here that have been generated by ChatGPT. I'm going to share some of these with you. I'm seeing these the first time you are. Again, I'm I'm coming to you not as this finished, slickly produced, three-hour live show like at CNN or the BBC. I'm bringing you into my workplace, my work studio, so you can see how a communications consultant, a trainer, a content creator thinks, works, and goes about creating things. 
Do you ever wonder if your communication style aligns with your personal or professional goals? Okay. What I do like about chat G, uh, GPT and artificial intelligence is it does sometimes pull questions that I haven't had people specifically ask me, and yet it's under the surface. I certainly know it's coming up. So I'm going to take a stab at that one. And I also see people are, are typing in comments. NSR says, TJ, I've always been a self-motivated person. I lost everything in a house fire. Well, let me address that. I, I do help people primarily with communication, but I also have personal development courses. And I have courses on decluttering. And NSR, when you say you lost everything, you may have lost your possessions, but I will tell you right now, if what's most important to you in life are possessions, you don't have much of a life. It, don't take my word for it. It's every single, you know what, my, I've just gone out of focus. So I'm going to learn a new trick that Ben taught me, which is if I turn my camera off for a second and turn it back on, that typically solves the problem of focus. And it seems like it's done it. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, every single self-development expert in the world, pretty much in agreement. If you see your life as being about your possessions, you're not going to be happy because someone's, you have a 500 square foot or 500 foot long yacht. You're going to compare yourself to someone with a thousand square foot yacht or th thousand yard long yacht. You don't want that. That's not a game you can win. I believe, not that I w hope you or anyone has a fire in your house, but I do believe that if you really want to be happy, you have to live your life in such a way that if your house goes up in flames tomorrow, you really couldn't care less because what is valuable to you in life are your experiences, your relationships, your friendships, your love. It's not about stuff you have. It is about what's in here and in here. That can't go up in flames unless you're in the fire and you die. And I certainly hope you don't perish in a fire. So NSR, I, I'm hoping you find motivation based on your interests, your ability to help people. Now, at what, at, look, we all like stuff. I'm no different. At one point, I had a very large house with every kind of stuff people have with large houses. And three and a half years ago, I downsized and streamlined, or I would say right size. I don't even like the term downsize. I right sized, moved into an apartment with my family, basically sold everything, gave it away, threw it away, donated it, got rid of 90% of my stuff. <clears throat> Has it made my life worse or deprived? No, it's been liberating. It's been freeing. It makes it so much easier to enjoy free time, to enjoy weekends, to enjoy vacations and not be encumbered by stuff. So I'm hoping you can make the best of it. Now you say it's not about the stuff I have. It's about the kids that I have. Okay. Obviously, if you have a lot of kids, having a house, losing it is, is a hardship. Everything you do is for your kids, trying to keep them positive. Well, that's great. I'm hoping, you know, that what you can really show them is that when bad things happen, you can keep a positive disposition. You can stay positive. You can stay focused and you can stay creating. Now, I don't know what field you're in or what industry you're in, but ideally it's something with your mind and wasn't about, you know, it wasn't just Airbnb and therefore you lost nothing against Airbnb. But if you lost your house, you lost your only source of income. I'm hoping you do something professionally with your mind that you can continue creating, continue to provide shelter for your family, food for your family and basic necessities, and just go from there. So, oh, you're in sales and marketing. So great. If you have, if you have one of these, oh, I'm pointing at, if you have a cell phone, <laughs> I was looking for my cell phone, I'm staring at it. If you have a cell phone, you have everything you need to be great at sales and marketing and always have a job <clears throat> because you can connect with people by calling them. You can connect with prospects and clients by texting them. You can connect with 
prospects and clients by creating content in video and sharing it across all social media and saying things of value that attract people to you who then want to buy from you. So I hope they didn't ruin your one good phone, but if you're watching this today, I'm assuming you've got another phone. So you're back in business. So I certainly wish you well, and I'm sorry to hear that your house burned down. Okay, so we're going to hop right in to this short form video about whether your communication style aligns with your personal and professional goals. <clears throat> I'm going to go to camera two. If you want to see these different camera angles, my friends on TikTok, I need you to hop over to my YouTube channel or to StreamYard. If you go, if you look in my bio, you'll see my YouTube channel. That way you can see the other channels, the other angles. We're using three different cameras, different camera angles. Plus you can definitely make sure I see your questions there. Plus you can actually come on screen and join me. You know, before we start, I see a little bit of a shine coming through on my face. So I'm seeing a little shine. That means I've moved the, around a little too much. And what I'm going to do is I put a mosaic powder on, not to give myself a tan. I don't want to change the color of my skin, but I do want to reduce shine so I don't look like I'm sweating. If I'm trying to convince people that I have secrets on how to look comfortable and confident and relaxed, I don't want to do it while I appear to be sweating because it's contradictory. It's, it is fighting against my message, which relates to the topic we're going to discuss right now. The question again, this is courtesy of Jet, Chat GPT. Do you ever wonder if your communication style aligns with your personal or professional goals? So we're going to hop in with that. We're going to go to camera two. Do you ever wonder if your personal style is in alignment with your professional goals or is it hurting you? Well, it could actually be cutting against you. If you're using a lot of profanity and you're in a conservative traditional industry, it could work against you. If you have boring, boring hair and attire and clothing and you're in a wild art field, that could cut against you. There needs to be alignment with who you are and how you communicate. So that one is a little bit tricky for a short form. I felt like I got some point across. I don't feel like I nailed that. I, I don't feel like, wow, that short form is destined to go viral and get 10,000 views. And sometimes I, I do feel like that. Is it still workable? I guess so. I, I mean, I think it can work. But I'm, I'm going to do a long form of that. If not later today, then probably tomorrow or, or later this week. Have you ever felt like your fear of judgment holds you back from expressing yourself fully? Okay. Again, what I like here is there's a nuance. It's, it's not just, are you worried about judgment? So I am going to sink my teeth into that one. Luke writes, if any men are afraid of wearing makeup on camera, research the difference it made during the Nixon and Kennedy TV debates and how they came across. One had makeup and one didn't. Famous example and disclosure, I was born when Kennedy was president, but I was not, I'm not old enough to have seen those debates when they were live. I, I have seen them on video years later in the 70s and 80s. So Nixon was very, had been sick, a little haggard, didn't want to wear makeup. Allegedly, he was afraid people would think he was a wimp or something. Kennedy did wear makeup. Now, the, the way the anecdote goes, and there's some debate on how true this is, people who heard the debate on radio in 1960 thought that Nixon won, that he came across better. People who watched the debate on television thought that Kennedy looked much stronger, more youthful, better color. Now, this is a bit tricky because it was black and white TV, so the makeup doesn't see, it doesn't appear the same way it does as, as today when people are watching in color TV. But the other thing Nixon did is he had more of a scalp, 
blank look on his face. Kennedy had more of a smile. The irony, of course, is that Kennedy had horrible health his whole life. He had the image of being young and healthy and dynamic and playing football. And many people don't realize Kennedy had spent basically a third of his life in hospital beds and sick and recovering. If he had not been assassinated, there are a lot of analyses suggesting he might not have lived to see his 50th birthday anyway because of Addison's disease, other diseases he has. But Luke is absolutely right. No man should be afraid to wear makeup or, or feel like, oh, that's not masculine. Because let me tell you, every macho star you see in any movie, any male macho star actors, they all have tons and tons of makeup on. Every news anchor you've ever watched, every star journalist you've ever watched, they all have makeup on. Now, in the modern world of social media, there are also a lot of people, not everyone, but a tremendous number of people who are social media stars also have on makeup. Now, I won't go so far as to call myself a star, but I am trying to create content that is high quality and evergreen and can last a long time and consistent with what I'm about. So yes, I do put on some makeup every single day, as you just saw me do right there. So Luke, thanks for, for putting that out there. You know, let me just do a short form on that, a short form video. I appreciate you bringing it up. Are you uncomfortable with the idea of wearing makeup if you're going to be on camera or doing a TV interview or social media interview? Well, don't be. Don't let other people's judgment affect you. Realize everybody, every action star, every TV star, every reporter you like and admire, they're all wearing makeup, men and women. So that's a, a slightly tricky issue these days because I don't want to be, I don't want to sound like I'm saying you have to wear makeup because there is a huge backlash, and, and this can differ by gender. Where sometimes, if I don't couch this the right way, people feel like I'm saying, you know, a woman has to wear makeup, and then that opens me up to criticism of being sexist. And then it's also a little bit delicate if I say. Uh, you know, men, you shouldn't worry about people casting certain assumptions about you if you wear makeup, because then that can be interpreted in a way that seems like I'm offending certain groups, which I'm not. <laughs> I just want you to look comfortable, competent, relaxed, and the best you can and not look shiny on camera. Hey, Ben, I know my colleague Ben is with us in the green room and behind the scenes. Ben, I know you've got a lot of things to do, so we'll see you probably around 1125 today for our Amazon Live. So looking forward to that. So we'll, we'll see you soon, Ben. Okay, let's go to the next top. Oh, I just dropped my remote control. We'll be using this, the remote control for my cell phone. Later today, I'll be making Amazon Influencer videos, something we try to do for a few minutes every single day here. Okay. This, this topic I just read, I do want to do a short form video of, have you ever felt like your fear of judgment holds you back from expressing yourself fully? Have you ever felt like your fear of judgment from others has held you back from expressing yourself fully? If so, it's completely normal. But realize this, if you don't speak out, judgments are made too. People may judge. You have nothing interesting to say. You've got nothing going on up here. So, again, that's a little bit tricky. Uh, part of my challenge when I'm doing a short form video is I've got to really get to the point, typically in 20 seconds or less, or I've lost the audience completely. So I've got to be a little more forceful, a little more absolute or resolute than when I'm just talking to you here and can talk for eight or 10 minutes on a subject or for three hours like we can each day here. I don't want to go so far over the top that I seem hammy or contrived or phony. 
And yet I do have to be more forceful, more concise than up to if I'm doing a three, four, five, 10, 15 minute video. So it's a constant judgment call, a constant balance right there. Do you want to say hello to our, our friends joining us on YouTube today? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, Twitch, a lot of other platforms today. And also a special hello to our good friends joining us on TikTok. If you're joining us on TikTok and you'd like to come on screen, I can't invite you from the TikTok app. But if you come on over to my YouTube channel, and my channel link is in the description or my bio there. Then you can join us by going, coming into the StreamYard link. One click, you can appear right on camera, share the time with me, share a screen, ask questions, debate me. You can tell me where you think I'm wrong. Nothing wrong with that. We, we want all opinions and we want a whole range of contents here and perspectives on communication. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any. We do have so many friends joining us from TikTok today, but it's simply much harder for me to connect with the TikTok people on a cell phone that's three feet away from me versus a laptop and desktop that has all my regular setup that we're using for StreamYard. So that's kind of what we're doing here. All right. I'm making short form videos today. Sometimes I make short form, meaning less than 60 seconds. Sometimes long form, meaning more than 60 seconds. Although we typically try to hit around eight minutes is the sweet spot. I'm going through questions generated by artificial intelligence chat GTP. Are you aware of the impact of filler words and verbal ticks on your communication effectiveness? And that is a good question. It's one I feel like I've dealt with a lot. So part of my challenge is I've always got to think about, do I have a new perspective, a fresher way to say it? I'm not sure I do for that one yet. More questions. Do you ever feel like your body language contradicts the message you're trying to convey? I think we did something similar to that yesterday. Have you ever struggled to make a memorable impression in social or professional settings? Ah, now we're talking. That one I like. Have you ever struggled to make a memorable impression in social or professional settings? Do you ever feel like you've struggled to make a memorable impression in social, professional settings? Well, take some pressure off. You don't have to say something wildly witty or the best put down ever. Instead, listen carefully to someone. Look at them. Ask them a question about what they said. That is what will make the most memorable impression. And the reason for that is most people don't do that. You go to a professional event, a cocktail party, and so many people are looking over your shoulder to see, is there someone more important there? Or their worst case of all, they're looking at you a third of the time and they're looking at their, uh, they're looking at their phone. They're trying to answer text. They're trying to read text. They're looking at an email and uh, you could fall over dead. They wouldn't notice. So by far, one of the best ways of really making a strong impression is to really listen to the person and make them feel like I am blocking out everything else in the world. Now, folks, we're not political here. We, t we don't really talk about politicians much because I don't want to start flame wars and get into ideological battles. That's just not what we're about. We are about communication skills, personal communication skills, public speaking presentation skills. So I reluctantly bring up this anecdote, but I can tell you every person I've ever met who has met face to face, former United States president, Bill Clinton, they all say the same. Doesn't matter if they didn't vote for him, didn't like him, different part, none of that matters. They all say the same thing. They say when you meet him, a reception, a cocktail party or event, 
you shake his hand. He looks at you and gives you the impression you're absolutely the only person in the universe he's interested in talking to. He really focuses on you and he makes people feel special and he listens. Now, the thing he also has, which is not something that I can do or you can do, he has apparently a complete photographic memory and an audio, I guess you'd call it an autographic memory because if you meet him once and you mention the name of your child who's about to go into seventh grade and you bump into him three years later, he'll ask about your child by name, further demonstrating he was really listening to you and remembering. Now, we can't all do that. We don't all have perfect memories. And again, if you don't like the, the particular politician I just mentioned, don't tell me why. We're not here to talk about that. We're just talking about communication skills. So that is something I think you can really do to help yourself is you don't have to have a photographic memory, but really look at someone when you meet them at a social event, party, professional event, give them your attention and it will make a memorable impression on them. Let's go to the next question. Are you curious about the science behind effective storytelling and its role in communication? That seems to be a little bit of an artificially contrived question. I just can't imagine someone asking it quite like that. But I do like talking about stories. And in short form videos, it's harder to do. It is harder to tell a story in, in 20 seconds, although you can. Uh, let me just think for a moment. Something else we do here on this live show is I'm not afraid to actually pause and think and to let you know what I'm thinking what, as I grapple with how do I communicate effectively with this issue? How can I somehow make it meaningful? You know what? I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it while we're taking a commercial break. So I'm going to show you commercials here that I've made for Amazon Influencer Program. And you don't have to buy any of these things. I do want you to see how relatively simple it is. The following commercials you're going to see, for the most part, all done, all done in one take. And they were done for Amazon, although I now have the right to put the videos anyplace else. So that's why we're showing them here. I will be back live in just a couple of minutes. So please don't go anywhere. And you could do me a favor by posting a question and letting me know what you are focusing on now in your own communication journey. Also, just say hi and let me know where you are today, what city you're joining us from. And TikTok folks, afraid you can't see this. This is playing on StreamYard. You can see it on YouTube. So if you want to hop over to the YouTube channel, the link is in my profile. And you can also just go to YouTube and type in TJ Walker and you will find it. Okay. the pickleball court every day. I live in South Florida where it is hot and muggy and it's important to me to be properly hydrated. I don't want to rely on a vending machine that's peddling other stuff. I want to take my own filtered water. That's why I use this Hydro Peak. It does a fantastic job. It's durable. I've dropped it many times. I have a dent or two in it. It still works perfectly. If you're looking for a thermos that is durable, sturdy, doesn't leak. I don't think you can go wrong with a Hydro Pack. Are you looking for something light and easy to take around to bring your music to your next party, beach, barbecue, pool event? This speaker does the trick. I've had this for several years. I've used it countless times with friends, family members, gatherings we've had, and it turns any normal gathering into more of a party. It sounds great, Without me having to lug around big speakers or find outlets, it holds its charge, it lasts for hours, it sounds great, it syncs up easily and quickly to my cell phone. I'm not the greatest tech wizard, but it's easy, easy to use. If you want a nice sounding speaker for your events, home, office, out at the beach, this speaker will do the job. Reading is important to me. That's why I love this reading lamp. It's very flexible. You can adjust up, down. 
You can adjust how bright or dim it is. Hi, I'm TJ with the TJ Walker Success Channel, and so much of my success I give to reading, reading a lot. I like to read at least an hour every night, so it's important for me to have reliable lighting. That's why I keep these around the house next to my bed, on, next to the couch so I can read there. If you're looking for something that's flexible and affordable and reliable, this reading lamp fits the bill. I don't do a lot of stapling these days, but every so often I do need to staple this Stanley. It works perfectly every single time and it has for years. If your office, your home office, your regular office needs a stapler, Stanley knows how to get the job done. Like anyone else, I like a bargain and go for other brands from time to time that I've never heard of. But when it comes to batteries, things I need to really work, where I need the power, I like to stick with something reliable. Duracell is a brand I trust. We buy packets of batteries in bulk, so we always have the power we need. This sunset lamp is very versatile, it comes with a great handy remote. I can easily turn it from blue to red to green to white. It's useful for your home, for your office. I use it for my TV set to give a little more depth. You're gonna like this if you want a simple way of creating a little extra light in any room. This glide gear teleprompter is fantastic. I mount it on my tripod, the camera goes in the back. I then pull this out and I put my iPod, iPad there. All of my text, my script is on there. I can use software to manage that. And now I can be in front of this, whether it's three feet, eight feet away, looking directly into the lens of the camera, following a script. No more of this stuff where I'm looking at cue cards over here, up there. I'm looking right at the camera. So it makes things really look and feel professional. Hi, I'm TJ with the TJ Walker Success Channel. I create videos for a living, media training, online courses. And there are times when I've got to get it word for word, just right. Whether it's an ad for someone else or my own products or services. That's why I have to use a teleprompter. This one has never failed me. I like the Kirkland water filter cartridges because I drink water all day long and I don't like chlorine taste in my water. We are back live. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hi, I'm TJ Walker. This is the TJ Walker Success Channel. This is the place where we come together as a community and try to help everyone be more effective in their communication skills and be more confident in their communication skills. You ask questions about communication, I answer them. I try to demonstrate best practices. But it can be a two-way street. You can come right on and join me on screen, share your own perspective. We can even debate. You can tell me where you think I'm wrong because a lot of issues with communication are not clear cut. What works well in one culture may be a disaster in another culture. In fact, just yesterday, I was looking at a preview of a revamp of my website, tjwalker.com, and I saw that my team had selected a picture where I am doing this, which is the, the OK sign in the United States, which has an entirely positive context. But in some cultures in the world, that's considered an obscene gesture. So since I try to appeal to people and work with people from all countries of the world, I told my team, hey, let's use another picture. Or maybe we airbrush the hand and make it just look like a wave because I, I don't want to go out of my way to offend people. Now, do we live in a time when people are touchier than ever and more easily offended than ever? Maybe, but it's not my job to go out and try to offend people and then tell them they are too sense. It's not what I'm about. That's not what I'm trying to accomplish here. I'm trying to communicate positive messages that help people become more successful by communicating more effectively in their culture and any other culture they want to deal with. And these days, so many of us are dealing with cultures all over the world, thanks to the internet, thanks to things like TikTok and YouTube, where we can connect with people instantly around the globe through things like live streaming, which is what we're doing today, and through videos on demand and through blog posts and by writing a book that's instantly available to people everywhere in the world. 
So we just took a, a, a break a moment ago and I was listening to some of those ads. By the way, those ads were done, most of them in one take, not scripted. I'm simply sharing how I feel about certain products. And I was thinking of the one I was talking about, the, the portable speaker, saying, oh, I've had it for years and I take it around and I was thinking the speaker. And I remembered, oh yeah, I took that speaker to the beach Saturday, this past Saturday, just a couple of days ago, and we had a great time and the music sounded good. So the reason I point that out is people feel too intimidated. Oh, I can't be an influencer. Uh, I, I can't hire an ad agency to write scripts for me. You don't need scripts. Just share positive experiences you have with products or services. And depending on what affiliate program you're in or what marketing program you're in, you can make money. Am I telling you you're going to get rich or get rich quick? No. I have made the vast majority of my income from selling my own products, specifically online training courses and workshops, books, things like that, and in-person trainings. But in the last few months, I have sort of branched out into the whole influencer game because so many of you have asked me, how do you do that? How do you speak more? How do you get more in front of people? How do you somehow make a living speaking and getting involved with sponsors and products? So that's why I've kind of been experimenting with this, sharing my journey. If you want to know more about that, stay with us in our third hour, typically the last half of the third hour. I make Amazon influencer videos and I show you soup to nuts, how to do it, how to make it, upload it, tag it, submit it, all of that. Soup to nuts. As far as I know, is the only place in the world where someone's actually demonstrating virtually daily how to do it. There's a lot of good places on TikTok, YouTube, other social media about how to be an influencer, specifically how to be an Amazon influencer uh, in that program but I'm actually showing you in real time how I'm making ads and what I'm doing. So stay tuned for that later on today. So let's go through now. I'm going to make more short form videos. These are videos that I do that for me are typically less than 30 seconds. I shoot for less than 24 seconds because the research shows that's really what's most popular for my students or my, my community here on YouTube and TikTok and social media. But by definition on most of the platforms, if it's less than 60 seconds, that's what counts. So let me just show you one. Let's just look at the most recent one today that's posted because I do post to every single day on my on all of my accounts, really. So I'm going to show this to you. We'd love to get feedback. We're always trying to figure out how can we actually make it better. And let me pick my screen. I'm going to share the audio. And I'm going to just go over right to my channel. So you can see precisely what I'm doing. And again, my friends on TikTok, if you want to see this, I'll need you to come on over to my YouTube channel, which is TJ Walker Success on YouTube. It's in the bio there. So I'm going to go right to my YouTube channel. And I'll just show you kind of the finished product. And you can see what my team does. Sometimes they're really successful and get a lot of views. Other times they fall flat. So in the last few days, for example, uh, let's just take a look at this one. This one in the end got almost 7,000 views. Let's take a look. And I have no idea why I'm not seeing any, hearing any audio here have your body why anyway we have it now i'll play it through twice and you can see it you want to shut down your body language it's going to make you look literally stiff here's the problem with 
holding a pen when you're giving a presentation. Once you're holding a pen, you're phrasing this finger, this finger, this finger, this finger, this finger. Your wrist is more frozen. Your arm is more frozen. You shut down basically half your body. Why do you want to shut down your body language? It's going to make you look literally stiff. Here's the problem with holding. Okay, so that was one of the more successful YouTube shorts I've had in the last few months at almost 7,000 views. That one well, went the other day. Uh, and it was by my standard, sort of a viral video. Here's one that went out yesterday that by my standards was sort of a, a dud, didn't go as well. And let me just play this, how to make money speaking. efficient way of getting speaking gigs in the modern era. It's not about getting DVDs and mailing them out to secure bureaus, doing your one sheets and calling and cold calling. No, no. The most efficient way in the modern world is to actually speak every day to a large committed audience online. Host your videos on YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, any and every social media possible and build a following. Build a tribe of people who really care about your ideas. Do that. The speaking gigs will come flowing to you magically. What's the most efficient and time efficient way of getting speaking gigs in the modern era? It's not about getting DVDs and mailing them out to secure bureaus. Doing your okay, so you get that one. So that one, I think, in my defense, has a lot of good information, but it kind of fell flat. I mean, the marketplace has spoken. That was not a hit on social media. It... And looking at it now, trying to figure out why did that work? Why did it not work? I think it was because I'm giving a tip that's not very easy or practical for people to do. It is a good tip. It's truthful. And I do have people come to me all the time and say, TJ, I want to be a professional speaker. I want to be up on the stage. That's my mission in life. And they think it's as simple as, I just need a better demo video, or I need a better one sheet, or I need an introduction to the right speaker bureau, and that's gonna solve my problems. And unfortunately, that's just not the case. And as I mentioned in that short form video, it's these days, it's really about having a larger social media presence and speaking on video on a regular basis to your own tribe, your own community, your own follow, and building that. And, you look at the people who are the most in-demand speakers, the Gary Vaynerchuks of the world and the Anthony Robbins of the world. They have huge, huge, huge presences on social media where millions of people are watching them every single day. So it is, I think, an accurate solution to people who want to speak more. Unfortunately, it's not fun, quick, or easy. And so I try to balance this with what I do here on social media and to give some tips that are simple, practical, easy to get motivated and get people excited. But I also don't want to pander to people and make everything seem like, oh, this is so quick, easy, simple. You don't have to do any hard work. Well, you do have to do hard work. <laughs> and I don't want to sugarcoat that. So that's kind of the two extremes of some of these videos. The one I gave about not holding a pen, there was some controversy. Some people didn't like that, got some negative comments. But it is a very simple tip because it's very easy if you're used to holding your pen, speaking, to simply put the pen down and speak and gesture. That's anyone can do that. Requires no work, effort, money, discipline. It just is a simple trick if you have that problem. So. I'm guessing that's why that one went a little better and more was more effective. Okay, we're gonna hop in and create more social media videos. You're seeing sort of the rough drafts here as I make them. And then my editing team puts the other video, the B-roll as it's called, the sound effects, the graphics. The other thing about the last one we just saw that didn't do very well, to me, it seemed a little too choppy, a little too cut, a little perhaps overly edited, and maybe it was slightly jarring. But I would love to have your opinion on that, too. If you have any opinion on either of those videos, please go ahead and post a comment. 
right here on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, Twitter, or TikTok. And those of you joining me on TikTok, thanks so much for coming by. I would love to have you join us live and actually appear on screen. All you have to do is come on over to our YouTube channel. There's a link to our StreamYard, and you can come right on and join us on camera. Uh, unfortunately, I can't join. I can't let you join <clears throat> from TikTok because then everyone else who's with us wouldn't be able to see it or hear it. So apologies for that. At some point, we're trying to marry our TikTok feed with our feed with YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and all the other social media platforms, courtesy of StreamYard. Let's go to the next short form video. <clears throat> Do you ever feel like you're not taken seriously because of your communication style? Okay. This is a, a very real issue. Let me see if I can come up with the pithiest, most useful piece of advice on that. Because again, it's easy for me to talk two or three minutes on any of these questions. It's much harder to figure out how do I deliver a nugget that's useful and actionable in 30 seconds or less. That is the challenge. And those of you creating your own social media video, if you are doing short form video, that's something you got to grapple with and think about. It's not just saying interesting stuff. You got to deliver it in an action packed way, in a forceful, concise way if you are doing any kind of short form video. <clears throat> so again, the question is, do you ever feel like you're not taken seriously because of your communication style? Okay. I'm switching to camera two again. That's typically how I do. And if you're on TikTok and you don't know what I'm talking about, I would need you to come over to our YouTube channel to see what I'm talking about because we have a whole studio here with three different camera angles. <clears throat> Do you ever feel like you're not taken seriously because of your communication style? Well, guess what? It's a real concern. A lot of people are dismissed. The main reason you're speaking too softly, too monotone, and you seem scared. You got to speak louder with a full range of your voice. So, <laughs> That's one where it is good advice. I definitely, definitely believe in that. The problem is it's not as simple for someone to just speak louder with a full range in their voice if they are nervous. It's not as simple as, oh, I'm used to holding a pen in my hand. TJ says, don't hold a pen in my hand, gesture. Now, that's something that's really easy to do. So as I mentioned earlier, I have to figure out this balance between tips that are easy to do versus medium degree difficulty versus hard to do difficulty. And for most people, the hard to do difficulty, but something I often advise them to do is to practice their presentation on video until they like it. It's not hard in the sense that it requires technical expertise or money or expense or anything like that, but emotionally it's hard to do because people don't want to do it. And it does take a little time. Certainly takes more time than just putting a pen on the table. Let's go to the next question. Have you ever wished you could decode the subtle cues that indicate whether someone is really listening to you? Okay. Camera two, record. Did you ever wish you could decode the subtle clues of whether someone's really listening to you? Well, you can, but you can't do it if you're thinking about what am I going to say next? What's on the script in my head? What's my next bullet point? You've got to really focus on saying one idea at a time and then really looking. Are they looking at you? Are they looking at their cell phone? Are they nodding or do they look confused? So... That's a, another one I would put as sort of a medium degree of difficulty because people understand the words of don't try to memorize and go through a speech, really look at people. 
Uh, but yet most people still do that. If they're presenting to an audience larger than normal, outside of their comfort zone, the, the focus is on here's my script or here are my bullet points and or I'm memorizing something. So you're not really looking at someone to see, do they have that look in their eye like, oh yeah, this is great, I'm getting this, or they look confused. So that is the big challenge so many people face. Are you aware of the impact that your posture can have on how you're perceived in social and professional settings? <clears throat> okay. Now, this is of special interest to me because as my own family tell me, I do have bad posture from time to time. I literally do a handful of posture exercises every single day and have done so for about five years because I tend to lean forward too much, which on camera actually looks okay. But in a professional setting and a reception, a meeting place, a networking event, it's not okay. So it is something I'm keenly aware of. So let's dive into this. Are you aware of the impact that your posture can have on how you are perceived in social settings? <clears throat> are you aware of how your posture affects other people's perceptions of you in social settings, professional settings? You may think you're talking in a competent way, but if people see you leaning forward, hunched over, the perception is you are afraid of the world. You're trying to keep people away. You need to not be ramrod stiff straight up, but you need to hold yourself high. Okay. So not every nuance can be dealt with in a short form video. I realize that I do think that I hit at least one or two of the most important points there with respect to how you need to hold yourself with posture. And as I mentioned, this is an issue that I, I deal with because I think what happened to me is I was much, t I'm, I'm not excessively tall. Now I'm 5'11 and a half, which is taller than I guess 70% of men, but it, it doesn't, I'm not seven feet tall. Growing up, I matured much faster than other kids. So I was like a foot taller than kids in you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. And I think I just got used to kind of leaning in to, down to people to connect with them more. And it's not a good habit. So as I mentioned, I, I do posture exercises every day. Believe it or not, I do have an, an entire course on how to improve your posture. So if you go to the Udemy platform or you go to Media Training Worldwide, and look at my online courses, you'll see one of my courses deals specifically with posture, which is it's good for many reasons to have good posture, but it's also good for your communication skills so that you communicate to people that you do, in fact, have more confidence. Next question. Have you ever wished you could project more confidence through your voice and mannerisms? Okay. And I see uh, Crazy Bamp has joined us on TikTok. Uh, Nick, is, <laughs> Nick is sending a comment that I do get from time to time. He says, Joe Biden. So yes, people have commented for whatever reason, specifically on TikTok a lot, that I am Joe Biden. And I do get it. Uh, we're both older white men with not a lot of hair and with gray hair. And to some extent, I think if you're if you're somebody under 40, all old white men look alike. Apologies to my fellow white men if that strikes anyone as a, a gross stereotype or unfair. But I get that. Now, Biden is 20, more than 20 years older than I am. So let, I will put that out there. But yes, we are both about the same height, about the same physique. You know, we're not we're not wildly tall, but we're taller than average, and we're more or less, you know, not fat and not thin. 
and we both have not much hair that is gray. So to that extent, yes, if you uh, want to think of me as Joe Biden, fine. But again, we're not here to talk politics. So if you don't like something about Joe Biden's party or politics, take it up with him, not with me here today. We're going to go to the next topic. Again, I shared it with you a moment ago. I had a moment to think about it. Have you ever wished you could project more confidence through your voice and mannerisms? Let's hop right into that. Have you ever wondered if you could convey more confidence with your voice and your mannerisms? Well, the truth is you can by making sure you don't make two simple mistakes that most people make. Most people stand up to speak. They get nervous. Their volume goes down. That makes them seem scared. You got to speak louder. Most people freeze their hands, freeze their body. So they seem stiff and scared. You need to move your body. So that one in retrospect may have been better if I had pulled it apart and done one on voice and one on mannerisms because I felt myself rushing, thinking, uh oh, I'm going to bump up against the 22 second mark and lose people. It would have been cleaner and simpler if I had focused on just one of those. So live and learn. We'll see how that we'll see how that goes. Question to my TikTok friends. I'm seeing all sorts of notices saying invite people to join us live. So I'm assuming that means these are people who have perhaps stopped by my TikTok channel before or have liked a video and TikTok gives you an option of inviting. So I guess I can just click a few of those. It's sending invitations. I don't really know what this is going to do, but hey, this is an experiment. And right now TikTok is asking me to verify that I'm a human being, which I've just done. And hello to our friends who've just joined us on YouTube and Facebook. Thanks so much for joining us today. If you would like to join me live right here and have your face on screen, ask questions or participate or demonstrate something or give a pitch. You know, so often people ask me questions here about speaking and I'm happy to provide answers, but don't forget one of the stated purposes of why we're here is to give you a forum to practice and get feedback in a low threshold way. So if, for example, you're going to be giving a pitch to investors later this week, you can come right on here, give your pitch, and we'll give you feedback on your presentation style, your messaging, whether it makes sense, whether we understand it. There's no charge for this. If you are, for example, about to go for an audition on Shark Tank, that's just a public speaking show. Essentially, you're giving pitch presentations. If you're going to go on Shark Tank, you can practice right here and it costs you nothing. I'll give you feedback and other members of our community will give you feedback as well. So keep that in mind. It's not you don't have to just ask questions here. Let's go to the next question, courtesy of ChatGPT. And I'm going to check that one off that I did. Are you mindful of how the pace of your speech affects the engagement of your audience? Okay. This one I do like because it relates to a topic that I do often talk about, but it does so from a different perspective that does allow me to talk about this in a slightly different way. Again, it's are you mindful of how the pace of your speech affects the engagement of your audience? Again, we're just here working. This is real time. So I don't edit out or go to another camera angle anytime I want to take a sip of water. I show you this because I want you to see how actual production is done. And I hope to motivate you to make your own online courses, your own online content for social media, your own training videos, your own master classes. All of those things can be very helpful to anyone running a business in 2024 and beyond. 
If you're joining us for the first time, I'm TJ Walker. This is the TJ Walker Success Channel. This is where we help people become more successful in life in a very, very focused, specific way by helping them become more effective in their communication skills and by building their confidence in their communication skills. Well, who the heck am I? I am the producer and the creator of more than 200 online courses, mostly about communication skills, also personal development. And I have more than 2 million students worldwide. I have students in every single country in the world, except for North Korea that I know of. But someone may have a virtual private network in North Korea and uh, be a student as well. You know, it just occurred to me, I do, I do know of clients who are students of mine who have spent time in North Korea. These are United Nations officials. So <laughs> I think I can truthfully say I have had a student who at least has spent time in, in every single country in the entire world. So that's one of these things that is amazing about the modern times we live in and the ability to connect and communicate through the power of the internet with voice and video. So let's hop in with this next short form video. Are you mindful of how the pace of your speech affects the engagement of your audience? I'm going to go to camera two. Are you mindful of how the pace of your speech affects your audience and the reception that you get? Well, it does. And that's because most speakers are nervous and they want to hurry up and finish their speech. So their pace is too consistently fast. Great speakers don't do that. They pause. They give an opportunity to the audience to listen, to respond, to laugh, to cry, to applaud and to nod. Yeah, not quite sure I nailed that. The big message there is slow down, vary your pace of a speech. But overall, when I look at great speakers in the world, any one 10 second clip, you may find them racing or going fast. But if you look at the total number of words they have come out of their mouth in a 10 minute, 10 minute period, it's typically always a lot fewer words than your average boring business presenter. Because average business people stand up, okay, I don't have a lot of time here. Let me go through all the data, as you can see on slide one, boom, boom, boom. And the pace is just too fast. It's too consistent. And the audience feels overwhelmed. And that is the problem. And therefore, they kind of tune out. When you alter the pace, specifically when you put in pauses, it changes. Just occurs to me. I'm saying the sorts of things I should be saying in making a long form video on this. So I guess I'll say that for later and try to come back to that. Okay. By the way, we have plenty of time left here in hour two. If you have questions about any aspect of communication skills, I am here for you. It could be about talking one-on-one. -on -one. It could be talking about social situations business networking situation, speaking up in meetings, giving presentations, talks, briefings, formal speeches, PowerPoint speeches, and even speaking to the media. So it's all on the table here. Any aspect of communication, that's what we're here to talk about. By the way, it just occurred to me, some of you may be thinking, well, TJ just showed us a video on why never hold a pen when you're speaking. Uh, there are exceptions to every rule. I'm act this is a working meeting we're in now. I'm showing you how I actually create content for social media. So I'm making, I'm literally making notes as we go. So I know that I did a particular video. That's why I'm holding it. Typically, <clears throat> if you're standing up, giving a new business presentation, a speech, quarterly reports, you're not making notes as you go. Therefore, no need to hold pen. Have you ever struggled to maintain a positive attitude? and convey enthusiasm while communicating with others? I kind of like that question because it's not one I've heard a lot, but I can tell it's kind of an underlying issue for some people. I'm gonna do a little experiment. I see so many invite buttons coming up on my TikTok. So 
I don't know if that's just encouraging me to TikTok to invite people who've already followed me or liked one of my videos. I'm not quite sure what it's doing, but I do want to say hello and thank you to all of my friends on TikTok. If you have any questions related to communication skills, feel free to post them, although it's much more likely that I'll see them if you come on over to our YouTube channel or Facebook or frankly, any other social media channel, because those are all being fed into something called StreamYard, which is an application that allows for multi-streaming on platforms at the same time. And I will see your, your questions posted if you post them anyplace else other than TikTok. But happy you could join us on TikTok. Going to the next question I just shared with you, have you ever struggled to maintain a positive attitude and convey enthusiasm while communicating with others. Okay. This I see all the time with people in certain businesses where they have to go through certain boilerplate and they just seem bored out of their mind. So let's see if we can grapple with that. Have you ever struggled to maintain enthusiasm when you're speaking to someone? Well, if you're not enthusiastic about what you say, why should they care? Now, this is a real danger in a lot of businesses where you find yourself saying the same thing again and again and again. You've got to give yourself the mindset of, I'm saying this for the first time to this person. It's got to be interesting to them. So <clears throat> there's a lot of different nuances to that issue. I'm not sure. I, I Well, I definitely didn't do it full justice. It's hard to do full justice to any serious question about communication skills in 20 seconds. The, the question is, did I help at all? Did I help anyone? And that may be one we have to look at and say, is this worth putting out to the world and asking people to give us their attention for 20 seconds? Or are we better off just hitting delete on that one? There are a lot of different ways of creating social media content. Some great creators will come up with spreadsheets and come up with thousands of ideas, think about it, sift on it, debate it, narrow it down to 100, narrow it down to five, produce all five, focus group test those five, and then only release one. And maybe they do one every two months. And it gets billions of views. It works for them. That's not really the way I like to do things. It doesn't work with my style, my temperament. I don't think that's really the best way I can help people with their communication skills. If you're an entertainer and you put out some world-class entertainment every two months, well, that's, that's better than the most successful movie director of all time because they can do at most, what, one movie a year. So it can work for the entertainment niche. And perhaps it can work occasionally in other niches of you know, how to in business. It just doesn't really work with how I like to create content. So one of the big rules I have for you is you got to figure out a rule that works for you and helps you accomplish your objectives. Now, there are some people who just want to spout off nonsense for five hours a day and a year later, zero viewers. You got to ask yourself, what are they really doing there? Maybe not much, not really accomplishing much. Other people may come up with a set formula and it's growing and they post a video every two weeks and it gets 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, but they find themselves doing the same old thing. It's formulaic. They're not enjoying it. They may already have plenty of money and don't need the money, in which case they say, you know what? I'm done not really getting anything out of it. Perfectly fine with that. You've got to figure out what works for you. That's really my main piece of advice, but experiment, figure out. You're not really going to know right out of the gate. The most successful YouTube creators I've seen have one thing pretty consistent among them, and that is they experimented on a whole lot of different formats, subject matter, genre, style, and length before they came up with something that really worked for them. 
If you doubt me, just look at early Mr. Beast videos. Look at early uh, who's the boss or who's Mr. Boss, the, the tech guru. Look at his early videos. They've, they've all evolved. Their personal styles evolve. Their confidence on camera evolves. Almost every case. <laughs> now, there's one example of someone, I think, who didn't evolve because he just emerged you know, as a small child, perfectly formed. And forgive me if you're from other parts of the world, but there's a United States broadcaster, a news journalist, a news anchor on the ABC network, David Muir. And I remember so, someone posting on Facebook saying, hey, check out this guy in junior high school. And I was expecting him to look goofy and sound weird and sound nervous and uncomfortable. No, he sounded as good when he was 13 years old as he does today after anchoring the number one news network in the country for going on better part of a decade. He was just that good that early. He had the perfect hair back then. He's got the perfect hair now. So some people do really blossom early, get a style and it sticks, but that's the exception. That is extraordinarily rare. In fact, he's the only one I can really think of who is like that. Okay, let's get to the next question. So I answered the one about the positive enthusiasm. Do you ever feel like your imposter syndrome holds you back from expressing your true potential? So this is one, it's getting me think, and I like questions that get me to think, but what I have to do, if I'm gonna be useful to you and to audiences around the world, is I have to crystallize my thoughts to the point where I can get it down into a concise bit of, a, of nuggets that are interesting to you, understandable to you, and usable to you. So I could certainly have a conversation with someone about imposter syndrome. I'm not sure I've yet crystallized the one tip that could be most useful to people. So I'll put that one, I'm circling it. I'll come back to that one because I'm not quite sure what to say on that. We're going to take a break in just a few moments, but let me see if I can get more one more down here. Have you ever felt like your words fall flat? Failing to convey the depth of your thoughts and emotions. Okay. That's I think a relatively easy one, a simple one, and a good one to do. Maybe camera two, I'm gonna hit record. Do you ever feel like your words fall flat, that they fail to convey the depth of what you're talking about and the emotion? Well, chances are they do. If you started your presentation process by writing bullet points on a PowerPoint slide, it's gonna be awful because there aren't emotions in bullet points. If you really want to connect with people and not fall flat, you have to fuse emotion with message and facts. So it's an important point. And I have to be careful sometimes because people sort of start putting me into the camp of, oh, TJ's anti-PowerPoint. I'm not anti-PowerPoint. I'm anti-boring PowerPoint. It's like, say, I'm not anti-television, I'm anti-boring television. Television is neither good nor bad. It depends on what you watch. If you love watching World Cup soccer and you can't go to the game, television's great. But if you're watching nothing but Jerry Springer and people fight and yell and scream at each other over nonsense, TV's awful. Same thing with PowerPoint. Not that there's that much the equivalent of Jerry Springer in PowerPoint. But the problem with most PowerPoint is it is just bullet points, and that's not an effective way to use the visual medium. Okay, we're going to take a quick commercial break here. I will be back here live. If you have questions, you can post them. You can come on and share the screen with me. And we're going to be here until noon today in hour three 
we will be going live on Amazon. So we'll be on another platform. I will be talking about and reviewing a number of books that I personally find very useful and giving people an easy way of buying those books with one click in real time on Amazon, which is kind of an exciting way to get into e-commerce. Now I've been selling products for years online, but only in the last week have I actually sold things live on Amazon. So that's kind of a new experiment. It's something I'm learning and it's something I know a lot of you have expressed interest in. Now, TikTok has its own e-commerce platform and some of you may be TikTok influencers. YouTube has similar things, Walmart, Target. Everybody's trying to get into the game of selling stuff eliminating friction. And I don't have all the answers here, but I am going down a path of learning, trying, experimenting on a daily basis. And I'm showing you some of the ways of doing that. So we'll be looking at that more in a moment. But first, I'm going to show you some old or older ads that I did make for the Amazon Influencer Program. Let's take a look. That's not the page. Hang on one second. Let me get rid of that one. And this is... Hi, I'm TJ with the TJ Walker Success Channel. I talk for a living in the moment. I make videos all day long on YouTube, make online courses and do speeches and workshops. So I get dried out a lot and quickly. So I'm drinking water all day long. I use these water filter cartridges. I go through them and they continue to do a good job. I've used this brand for many years now, never had a problem, they always fit perfectly, they always work fine, they keep my water tasting fresh and chemical free. So I like these cartridges. If you're looking for cartridges and they fit your water filter, give these a try. This Emart Chroma Key green screen is fantastic. I've used it for literally thousands, you're gonna think I'm making this up, thousands of videos over the last few years. I'll do production here and sometimes make 100 in a day and it can look like I'm anywhere. Now what I like about this green screen is it's got stability to it. There's never any wrinkles, it's huge, it goes down easily, it goes back up, and if you're using a different set, you push it all the way down and you can just put it in a corner. So it really is flexible, it looks great, and it will help make your next production really look first class. I like books, but I don't like them falling down and cluttering up the house and the office. That's why I love these bookends. They don't call attention to themselves, they do one thing, they keep my books nice, neat together and not falling down. I use them on my shelves. They work well at home and the office. If you wanna have a neater, book collection. You can't go wrong with these bookends. I love seltzer water and sparkling water, but I hate having to go to the store to get it. I don't like more and more bottles for landfill. That's why I love my soda stream. I can take regular water and I can make it sparkling. It tastes great. I love it because it fills me up during the day. I'm less likely to snack, but it just tastes good. It's more interesting than plain tap water and you can make it anytime you want. I get bored drinking plain water, tap water. I love sparkling water. And yet I don't like having to drive to the store constantly, stock up on all those bottles and then having empties around the house. That's why I love using this SodaSense CO2 cylinder. It works perfectly with my machine that creates tap water and turns it into sparkling water. If you like sparkling water, this CO2 cylinder has done a great job for me. The Stanley stapler is powerful. I mean, don't point it at anyone. When you use this, whatever you're stapling is going to stick. Just make sure you don't get it to stick to the table by accident. It's a powerful, powerful stapler. My family, we use it around our home. I use it in my office. It is effective. This Canon camcorder is still useful. I love 
being able to use this in a training. I can flip the viewfinder around. I love being able to attach it so easily. Light, battery. It really is a very flexible camera that still has a lot of utility in the modern world. This Amazon Basics tripod is a very effective little tool. We're back live. Thanks so much for joining me today. Hi, I'm TJ Walker. This is the TJ Walker Success Channel. We're all about helping you become more successful in life through a very specific way, helping you communicate more effectively and boosting your confidence in your communication. You really need both of those things. Here, taking your questions and sort of showing you my workshop as I make content for social media, short form videos and long form videos. Matt writes in on TikTok, says, TJ, why are you wearing a suit in your living room? So fair question. Couple of things. This is not my living room. This is a TV studio that I have built. It's about four, five blocks away from where I live in South Florida, Palm Beach County, Delray Beach. So this is a studio designed just for making social media videos, online courses, doing live webinars, doing live keynote speeches here. You can't see it from TikTok, but if you come on over to our YouTube channel, you'll see I've got a three camera shoot. I've got one that is a, a wide shoot where I can actually walk around like I'm on stage and demonstrate things. And there's a lot of depth here. I realize I've stepped off camera for you. We have another camera angle that is more like I'm up on a stage. The camera is low. You see curtains behind me like I'm at a conference. Again, apologies, you can't see. And we have a third shot that's sort of a, a standard close up. So A, it's not my living room. B, the reason I'm wearing a suit is because of you, because and other people like you. What I have found in posting a lot of social media videos on TikTok, YouTube, and other places is that videos where I'm wearing a suit get sometimes 10, 20, 50, sometimes 100 more views. So for whatever reason, if people are looking for information and insights on communication skills and public speaking and speaking in business settings, which are my areas of expertise, somehow they feel more comfortable, apparently, taking it from a guy who looks like he's in a business setting wearing a suit. If it were up to me, you know, this isn't what I wear when I come in in the morning. I'm, I'm wearing shorts and I'm wearing a linen short sleeve shirt and a very lightweight mission baseball cap. <laughs> That's what I'm wearing and Crocs. So I'm wearing this because I want to resonate with you and to not confuse you. I think it confuses people seeing me dress so casually, but talking about tips on you're giving a presentation to a serious business audience or you're pitching investors or something. So that is why I am wearing the suit, Matt. Uh, it's not, and I don't hate suits, but I have not worn a lot of suits in the last few years uh, because everything is done virtually and you, have meetings on Zoom, things like that. And traditionally, I've not worn a suit when creating and hosting most of my online courses. I, I tended to be more casually dressed or just wearing a simple blue shirt without a, a jacket or tie. But that's how I've, I've changed. I've tried to listen to the marketplace. And that is how people have responded the best is when I am, in fact, wearing a suit. So hope that answers your question. I don't mind questions like that. And really nothing's off limits. I would ask if you could think about if, if the question you're asking could be useful to other people. You know, someone yesterday said, TJ, are you wearing contacts? Well, yeah, I am wearing contacts. I typically wear glasses all day long. I don't like to wear glasses when I'm on camera because the reflection can be a little distracting to people. And I do find it is easier for people to listen to you focus on you, connect with you if they can see your eyes. The glasses provide another barrier between you and the audience. Now, am I saying it's always wrong to wear glasses or you can't be successful wearing glasses? Obviously false. There 
are a lot of wildly successful talk show host, journalists, news anchors who wear glasses and it's a part of their style. It works for them. It's just a, a minor cosmetic thing I decided to do to try to connect with you more. But any question is fair game. Now, I just received a note that another question came in on TikTok and I somehow have missed it unless it just gave me a double notice. So if I've missed your question and you've posted a question on TikTok, I invite you to come join me on YouTube where I know I will see your questions. And I'll give you a further extended invitation to join me live right here and your face can be up. So I posted the link to StreamYard if you want to join me here in the studio and we'll split the screen. You'll be on half. We can see you wherever you are. We can hear you. So it's not just me pontificating, forcing you to listen to me. This can, in fact, be a conversation and a dialogue if you want to join us. So I see a bunch of hearts coming up on TikTok. So thank you so much, whoever is sending the hearts. I do appreciate that. We're going to hop right into the next topic for short form videos. I'm do two main things here for my YouTube and social media channel. In addition to the live, we do short form video, which has to be less than 60 seconds. But for me, I found with my audience, typically 25 seconds or less is going to be much, much more likely to succeed, go viral and reach more people. And then long form videos, typically five, six, seven, at least eight minutes, but it really could be anything over 60 seconds. Have you ever felt like your words fall flat, can failing to convey the depth of your thoughts and emotions? I believe that one we did. Have you ever wished you could speak up with conviction and authority without second guessing yourself? Okay. This, I know what I want to say. I've got to figure out the best way of saying it so that it appears fresh to people. Have you ever wished you could speak up with conviction and authority without second guessing yourself? Have you ever wished you could speak up with authority and conviction without second guessing yourself? Well, you can, but you can't do it the first time. The first time you say something, if you're not quite sure, you might second guess yourself. But if you've practiced once or twice, you can convince yourself this is true. And then you can just say it. If somebody asks you, who's your favorite sports team of all time? You can just tell them with conviction and authority because you've said it before. I think that mostly came across the way I wanted. But again, the challenge, the difficulty with short form video is there's always so many things you want to say. People often get this backwards. They think that, uh, you know, it's, it's harder to do long. Oh, I got to come up with more stuff. I got to write a long script. It's actually much easier to talk for two, three, four minutes. Mark Twain once said this. There's usually a famous author in every culture who's quoted saying this. It says something to the effect of, I'm sorry I wrote you a long letter. I didn't have time to write you a short letter. It actually takes more time to figure out how to narrow down the content, figure out what's most important, and say it in the most concise way. So that is partly my challenge. And every short form video creator's challenge is how do you figure out the most important thing to say and to say it as briefly as possible. So you deal with these time constraints. Yeah, it's got to be less than 60 seconds, but so many of the best TikTok and YouTube shorts are far less than that. Some of my best performing videos have been under or less than 10 seconds. Am I saying you've always got to speak in less than 10 seconds? No, but... <laughs> It does, it is something that is a challenge. More comments have come in on TikTok and someone named Scout says, at Matt, look again. I'm not quite sure uh, what you mean or if you're referencing someone else's comments or, if, oh, 
Matt says, why are you wearing, you're referencing Matt's comment about why I'm wearing a suit in, uh, in my living room. Yeah. So definitely not a living room, but uh, we're still designing this set here and you can see more of it if you come to the YouTube channel. And I apologize. The lighting is a little bit off. If you're watching on TikTok. it's a slightly different angle. I'm seeing like this accent light above me that I'm pointing at is a little too dominant on the feed going to TikTok from my cell phone. Whereas people watching on YouTube, Facebook, and other platforms, I'm, I'm, you can see it, but it's a little more muted. It's not quite as dominant. And by the way, if you're wondering the significance, uh, why is the light green some days and lavender another blue? What are all these hidden meanings with the light? There is no hidden meaning. I simply have not learned how to program these light. And I'll just show you. I mean, this, they come off, they charge, and these are accent lights that I've gotten. So here we are kind of blue, that's off. This is kind of a more of a reddish pinkish color, They're a yellow, back to red and back to blue. So I typically start off with blue, but then they sometimes just do whatever they want to do. So apologies if you find that distracting. And now it's switched to green, as you can see. So, but there's no hidden meaning. It's not special signals to our our inner team or anything like that. Okay, we're gonna hop on to the next topic for short form videos. Are you curious about the impact of digital communication on our ability to connect authentically with others? Now, I'm actually reading an entire book on this subject by the, the psychologist, Jonathan Haidt. I was reading this at 5 a.m. today and his whole theory is that the cell phone, his smartphone, has radically transformed society, and it's particularly destructive to adolescent men, pre-adolescent girls, where the self-harm rate has skyrocketed, suicide rates have skyrocketed, mental depression has skyrocketed in every country where people have smartphones. And it went up right at 2010, when specifically smartphones change to have the self-facing cameras that allow people to take selfies constantly. So this is a topic I've been giving a lot of thought to as recently as 5 a.m. So I am definitely going to want to talk about that. Are you curious about the impact of digital communication? I may change that to smartphones. Are you curious about the impact of smartphones on our ability to connect authentically with others? Is the smartphone affecting our ability to communicate with others? Absolutely. I'm sure you've seen it. You're talking to someone, they're staring at their phone. You say something funny, they don't laugh out loud. They say LOL. So yes, it's changing everything. Make sure it doesn't change you too much. It doesn't get to all the nuances of an entire book the 400-page book by Jonathan Haidt. I, I am going to be doing an Amazon Influencer review and endorsement of that book once I finish it, but I'm about 10% done. I just got it yesterday, started reading it last night, early this morning. It is a fascinating read so far, but I, 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 want, I like to finish books before I give reviews and before I endorse them, before I recommend them to you or other people. So that will be coming up. Have you ever felt like your fear of public speaking holds you back from seizing opportunities and showcasing your expertise? So this one, the challenge for me is I talk about a lot about fear of public speaking and I've touched on this a lot. I'm trying to think about how can I make this fresh and interesting? Perhaps Luke has an idea. I see what's food menu has stopped by on YouTube. It says, hi, TJ. Hi, what's food? Thanks so much for stopping by. Let me know where you're from today. If you mentioned before 
forgive me if I forgot, but I always like to know where people are joining us from in any one day. But right now, I'm going to try to figure out how I can answer this question in a way that seems a little bit fresh and a little bit more interesting than just the same old, same old tip. So again, the question is, have you ever felt like the fear of public speaking is holding you back from seizing opportunities. And What's Food Menu is in joining us from Jordan today. Uh, just last year, my company had a major assignment working for the United Nations in Jordan. My colleague Jess went, but I hear great things about your country and have, have done trainings in nearby in Lebanon, in Qatar, and in the Emirates, but have not been to Jordan, but hope hope to get there one day, hear good things about it. So I want to figure out the best possible way to answer this. Is the fear of public speaking holding you back from seizing opportunities? Is the fear of public speaking holding you back from taking opportunities, showcasing your strengths because you fear you might fail you might be laughed at. Well, you could fail. The speech might fall flat, but when you don't speak, you're guaranteed failure because no good things can happen. No one can reward you, buy from you, invest in you if you don't speak out. So that's that's, I think, the best I can do in a short form on that. There's so many nuances we can really talk about with this fear of public speaking and all the way it, all the different ways it can chip away at someone's opportunities in life. And when I do talk to so many people who are successful in life, quite often it does come down to one speech they gave earlier in their career and it generated you know, tens of million or at least millions of dollars of spinoff business. One TV appearance gener generated all kinds of opportunities. I remember once I was in Manhattan at a cocktail party for a book author, and I happened to, to meet uh, Lisa Birnbaum, author uh, or Burnback, author of the Preppy Handbook. And she was telling me how the very first interview she ever did in her life was on the Today Show, which, you know, this was many decades ago, back when there was no cable TV for the most part. There was no internet. So if you were on the Today Show, 10 million plus people, you were basically famous. And she was petrified. But that book went on to become a huge, huge bestseller. And a wildly significant element of our pop culture still talked about today, 40 some years later, and helped propel her career to new heights. What if she'd said no to that opportunity? So that really is the problem with letting our self doubts hold us back, our lack of confidence keeping us back is you don't even know all the opportunities that could come your way by saying yes to speaking, to media appearances, to starting that YouTube or that TikTok channel. You're not getting seen by the people who could possibly promote you, hire you, invest in you, marry you for that matter. So keep that in mind every time you say no. It's never a clear cut case of, well, I'm not ready this is too risky. There's risk either way. Yes, there's always a risk when you speak. You might make a bad impression. You might make no impression. But there's always the risk of the opportunity cost, the lost opportunity. By not speaking out, you missed out on something really good, of connecting with people who could really been a major positive role in either your career or your life. So no such thing as saying no, always reducing risk. It reduces one sort of risk, but it increases another form of risk. Okay, let's go to the next question here. Have you noticed how societal norms 
and expectations shape your communication style and expression. Okay. Yeah, that is something that allows me to talk in a little more detail about uh, certain aspects of history that a lot of people don't know about. So let me take a, a stab at that. Have you, have you noticed how societal norms and, and expectations shape your communication style and self-expression? Make sure my tie's not getting crooked here or falling down a little. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to camera two. Again, if you want to see what different camera angles I'm talking about and you're on TikTok, come join me on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, really any other social media platform, and you will see the different camera angles I'm using and what I'm talking about. So we're going to go to camera two. Does society change its norms for how we communicate? Yes, all the time. When Lincoln and Douglas debated 200 years ago, it wasn't, I'm going to do a scratch on that. Time out. It wasn't quite 200 years ago. I don't want people fact checking me. I'll say a couple of centuries ago. Let me do that one over. Note to editor, don't use anything I just said. Does society's standards about communication change and affect how we communicate? Absolutely. Almost a couple hundred years ago when Lincoln and Douglas were debating, they could speak for three hours and people considered that entertaining. Now we are in a TikTok, YouTube, short form type of situation where people have to get it out in 10 seconds. <laughs> okay, so this is a perfect example of today... Uh, note to editor, don't use that. I'm going to hit stop. Today, I think pretty much every one I've done, I've done in the first take, but there I just messed up in two takes. That's okay. That's life. That's reality. To me, the simplest edit is always hit delete. Just do it again. Let me see. You know, every once in a while, I'll start making a short form or a long form video and something has not been quite worked out in my brain where it's not really polished enough, in which case I may say, eh, just delete that. We'll go to another topic. There's always another topic you can discuss when it relates to communication skills. So to me, that's, that's always an option rather than sitting there and spending eight hours trying to piece together 40 seconds of video to edit together to make it seem perfect, just better off hitting delete most of the time, at least in the genre of the stuff I do. That's my philosophy. You got to figure out what works for you. Okay, we're going to go to camera two again. The, the issue is how societal norms shape your expectation, your, your, your communication style and self-expression. Do societal norms change our expectations of how to communicate effectively? Absolutely. 150 years ago, people would go attend a lecture and people would lecture for three hours. And you just sit there. These days in the modern short form era, people expect boom, 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 something interesting in the first 15 seconds. So you got to deliver. So I have slightly contradictory feelings about that because I do believe you want to be interesting to people and grab attention when you start. But it doesn't mean that every speech has to end in 15 seconds or 20 seconds. People do come to me all the time and say, TJ, teach me to be concise. And really what they need me to do is teach them to be interesting. You can be concise, but if you don't say anything interesting and it's boring, everyone tunes out. You can speak for hours and hours and hours. If you're consistently interesting, people will listen to you and want more. You're watching the TJ Walker Success Channel. Thanks so much for joining me. We have friends today with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, 
Twitch, Twitter X, Instagram. Shortly, we're going to be going on Amazon Live, and we have our friends on TikTok with us today as well. So many friends have joined us on TikTok, and thanks so much for posting your questions, comments. I'm seeing 502 hearts at the top of my TikTok. And forgive me if any of you know what that means. I don't know if one person hit the heart button 502 times. If that means 502 separate people did, I don't quite know what that means. So if anyone cares to enlighten me, I would love to hear that. If you're joining us on any of the other social media platforms, I have posted a link to StreamYard today. That would allow you to come right on screen, ask questions, do a demonstration, give your own pitch, and be a part of this community. More than happy to have you join us. What I'm doing today and often do here is just I bring you into my workshop. This is not my living room, as, as Matt thought, although I am trying to make it feel friendly. Uh, this is my studio, and this is where I make short-form videos, long-form videos, webinars, online courses right here. And what I'm doing today is trying to make as many short-form videos that can later be edited by my team and turned into videos, typically 30 seconds or less, and distributed across all social media with the goal of helping more people become better communicators. And with a certain percentage, less than 1%, who figure out, okay, this guy gave me something useful here. I need more help. Let me reach out to him. And those people, again, you don't have to do that, but less than 1% can come back, go to my website, and decide they want to buy one of my online courses, or they want to hire me for a day of in-person training, or they want me to come to their organization to give a keynote speech. There's a lot of different ways I help people just like you, and it's flexible. It, that's what I like about this. It's easy. I don't have to give you a hard sell. Of, oh, you got to hire me tomorrow, or I can't pay my rent. Hire me. Uh, so my child doesn't, not like that. <laughs> There's just a lot of different ways that we can connect and help each other. Let's go to the next question. Have you ever can, wished you could exude more warmth and approachability in your interactions with others? Okay. So this is one of these topics that relates to personal communication. I traditionally spend most of my time helping executives figure out how to give speeches, talks, presentations, speaking to the media. This is more in the realm of personal communication that everyone can relate to. And in fact, a lot of my most successful videos deal with personal communication issues just like this, but it also is a topic that I'm not used to talking about as much, where I don't have a set series of these two principles and this anecdote and I package it together and I know I'm going to give something to someone that works. So I had to think about this a minute. It might come to me in a few seconds, in which case I'll share it with you. I may have to say, you know what, let me sleep on that and come back to it tomorrow. Again, have you ever wished you could exude more warmth and approachability in your interactions with others. Okay, I know what I can say. Have you ever wished you could exude more warmth and approachability when dealing with others? Well, you can. It's really as simple as not thinking about me, 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 me. Focus on the other person. Smile to the other person. Listen to the other person. Ask them questions about them. Don't try to talk about yourself. That will make you seem warm and approachable. So those of you joining me, and I realize I'm out of frame for those of you on TikTok. Again, what I'm doing here is I'm creating videos that my editing team can then polish, refine, not really edit that much in or out of what I'm saying, but they can put B-roll images on top. They can put sound effects. They can put a graphic up to make the video 
more exciting for social media. So I'm pausing before I start to make it easy for the editing team to see exactly where to start. And I'm pausing at the end so it makes it clean and simple. You don't have to do it that way, but it makes it a lot easier for your editors. Or if you edit it yourself, it's going to make it a lot easier. I'm also, you can't see it because it's out of frame uh, really for everyone, but I have an ATEM Mini Pro ISO mixer right next to my laptop. It has about eight different wires going into it. One wire is from camera one, another wire from camera two, which I just did another wire from camera three. So I'm able to push buttons to determine what camera is shown to folks watching live. But I'm pushing another button that records the video at the highest possible quality rate 4K. Everything is being recorded here on StreamYard and YouTube for replay on high definition, but the 4K is much, much higher quality, but it also takes massive amounts of space. So I'm only recording that for the elements I know are going to be used for production. So that's what I'm doing here. If you see me like, why is he like leaning down and touching? I'm actually running the mixer board, which if we were CNN or the BBC or Al Jazeera or some other big network, there would be a whole team of people to do that. Thankfully, we live in a world now where access to the media, access to mass media and worldwide media has become democratized. And it's no longer controlled just by huge multi-billion dollar corporations and, and government media outlets. And there's good and bad with that. I'm not saying it's an unbridled good thing. I do think what I'm doing here is a net positive for the world. I am trying to help more people communicate more effectively. And I think that's, that's good pretty much any way you slice it. We've had more people, a lot more people come in. Goldfig has joined us. Pandalonia has joined us. Christine has joined us all on TikTok. So hello to our TikTok friends. And if you want to join me live on screen, happy to do so. But you would need to come on over and join us on YouTube. The link is in my profile on TikTok. You can also find it just by going to YouTube and typing in TJ Walker success. And it's pretty easy to find if you just type in TJ Walker on YouTube. It's typically number one or number two channel that pops up. Let's go to the next video here, the next topic that I can make a video on. And also a quick reminder, in hour three today, I will be continuing our ongoing series on how to be an influencer, specifically how to be an Amazon influencer and even more specifically, how to go and broadcast on Amazon Live, which we will be doing, and how to make videos for the Amazon Influencer Program that can show up on product pages on Amazon, which is, in my mind, what's unique about Amazon, what's different in that you can make a video and not really have your own audience because Amazon will put it on the page of people who are already looking to buy already looking at that product. And then if they look at your video before buying the product, then you can get some percentage, a small percentage an affiliate fee for that. I do want to stress, I'm not an employee of Amazon. We have no legal partnership. It's simply something they make available to people as in a type of affiliate program that is a little more advanced than their regular affiliate program. If you have questions about that, how to be an influencer, how to start, where do you start, the easiest way to start, post your questions right here. I'm happy to give it a try at answering it in a way that's useful to you. Next question. Have you ever felt like your lack of confidence undermines your ability to negotiate and advocate for yourself? Okay, that's something that really resonates with, with every, every human being has to negotiate. Life is a series of negotiations, as any negotiator will tell you. And if you lack confidence in your position, you can't really advocate for yourself. 
I like this topic because it takes me out of my normal realm of giving a speech or presentation. And yet it's so useful to so many people, whether you're negotiating your rent or you're, you're negotiating, negotiating what you want to charge for your graphic arts services. Everyone has to negotiate all the time. So let me take a stab at that. I'm going to switch to camera two. I'm going to hit record. Again, it's have you ever felt like your lack of confidence undermines your ability to negotiate and advocate for yourself? That is the question as posed by ChatGPT and artificial intelligence. I'm going to rewrite it to see if I can make it resonate more with an audience, a social media audience. Do you ever feel like your lack of confidence has undermined your ability to negotiate effectively for yourself? Well, chances are it has. If you go into a negotiation for a job, for a rent increase or anything, and you're like, I don't know, what do you want? I'll take what you give me. You've undermined your position and you're not going to get anything you want. You have to know exactly what you want, why you believe it, why you deserve it for every negotiation. So again, that's not a topic I'm used to talking about as much. So you may have noticed there wasn't the, the same level of confidence. I think I like to think I still came across as confident, but perhaps not the, the, the highest level of confidence on that because I'm thinking about what I'm saying right there. When you see me in short form videos, whether they have 10,000 views or 500 views, these were not written out, typed up, edited, revised, screened, previewed, focus grouped, put it on a teleprompter and me delivering it. That's not how I do my social media videos. Nothing wrong with that for people who do. What I'm doing is I am saying it off the cuff in a spontaneous way, but it's based on years and years and years of training people in the field, on the ground, reflecting on it, reading about it, writing about it, conducting courses on it. So it's not just me pulling stuff out of you know where. It is based on reason. But that particular topic of confidence as it relates to negotiation is it's was sort of one step away from the normal place where I'm talking about confidence, which is when you speak. Negotiation typically does involve speaking. It's a type of speaking, but it's not what people think of as sort of your, your typical presentation. So quick program note, we will be going live on Amazon in this hour. In fact, I'm going to take a, a brief commercial break get my colleague Ben to help us with the setup for that. And we'll be doing more reviews of books. And more important to you is I want you to see in relative terms how easy it is to go live on Amazon, be in a worldwide marketplace, also make video-based ads that can be working for you when you are sleeping. And I, I want to caution myself. I hate it when people start talking about passive income. Typically when people say passive income, my advice is guard your wallet. Someone's about to steal from you. But there are some things that really do work for you when you are asleep and you do it once and it can create at least the potential for income for a long time to come. I have a lot of online courses, many of them where the initial footage was shot 10 years ago. And they do make me money, some of them virtually every single day. So it can happen, but it's not easy. Jasper just writes in with a comment. I have to copy that, share that to my wife and daughter. They will get a chuckle out of this. Uh, Jasper1970 says, you are so gorgeous. Well, thank you for that. I do appreciate that. One of the reasons so many people decide to never go live on YouTube or TikTok 
to never make videos talking about their business, their expertise, their subject matter is fear of negative comments about appearance. And I won't kid you, you will get that. And I very much appreciate Jasper calling me gorgeous, but I laugh because I think about all the other comments where, I mean, just yesterday, I was sharing with you a comment over the weekend, someone saying, I looked like a serial killer. <laughs> I've had people comment that they hate my teeth, that my eyes are too close together, that my hair is less than perfect, that the color of my hair is less than perfect, that I need more lotion on my face because I'm wrinkled. <laughs> and I think you've got to just chuckle at all of it. I I appreciate Jasper being nice, but I chuckle at that in the same way. I chuckle about people telling him how, how ugly or horrible or monstrous I am. I just think that for the, for the most part, you have to ignore comments about the physical aspects because if you're delivering something of value to people, they don't care what you look like. If you can either help people with some information that's useful to their life or entertain them, if you can do one of those two things, nobody cares what you look like. If you doubt me, just look at Judge Judy, look at Dr. Phil, many of the most wildly successful content creators, talk show hosts in the world are not by any stretch of the imagination, traditionally young and good looking. They're just not, but they deliver either information, insight or entertainment that people value and they're wildly successful and they make all the riches they want and they have adoring fans and they don't care what anyone says about their appearance. I think that's really, the best attitude. But Jasper, again, thank you so much for your kind words. It, it is very much appreciated. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then shortly we'll be coming back talking about the Amazon Influencer Program. Now, it comes up to about this high when it's fully extended, but it's light, it's simple, it's flexible. What I like Oh, and apology. This is where I have to say goodbye to our friends on TikTok. So we're going to say, because I've used that phone to go live on Amazon. So we got to say goodbye to you. Thanks so much. If you want to see what we're doing, you can join us over on YouTube. So again, just go to YouTube, type in TJ Walker or type in TJ Walker success and you will see me. Thanks. like about it is when it's fully compressed, it fits right into my computer bag. So I don't have to have some big equipment, fancy equipment bag taking it. I put my video cameras and this and my laptop in one bag. I put it over my shoulder on the plane and it allows me to go anywhere in the world with tripod ready. This Sony condenser microphone is the one I've used for years and years for all of my YouTube videos. It gives clear, powerful audio. It is professional in every sense. Sony, of course, well-known, well-deserved reputation for electronic excellence. If you're looking to up your game, try the Sony condenser microphone today. Of course, you want to look your best. I want to look my best, but you want to sound your best too. That's why I always put in a microphone into my iPhone 15. This microphone works perfectly. It boosts my sound. I don't have to get right next to my cell phone. I can be further away and the audio still sounds great. You're going to want to use this microphone if you want to create professional looking and sounding videos. Have you ever looked inside your computer? Chances are it is filled with dust, dirt. How do you get it clean? I use the CompuCleaner too. This is a very, very powerful, powerful airflow. It gets rid of the dust. It gets rid of the dirt. It does not damage your computer. So if you want to really give your computer a nice spring cleaning, this is the tool for you. It's highly effective. I've had mine for years. It continues to do a great job. This Logitech wireless mouse is extraordinarily reliable and durable. I've had it for about 10 years. It still works well. 
I've even broken the back off. No fault of the mouse, that's just me being clumsy. And it still works great. In this high-tech world we live in, why would anyone want an old-fashioned notepad? Because there's something about actually getting a pen or a pencil, writing it down on paper, it makes it more meaningful, more memorable. I love these notepads. They're simple, easy to carry, and they require no batteries. The SanDisk 2 terabyte hard drive is flexible, it's very light as you can see, and it stores a mountain of information. These straps are why I can play pickleball in the hot Florida sun and not worry about my glasses falling off. Hi, I'm TJ with the TJ Walker Success Channel, and I love exercise and I love being active, but it's tough if you wear glasses and you're in the hot Florida sun. That's why I always use these straps because they ju it just fits right on each side of your glass. It slips on. Then I can tighten this so that it's right up against the back of my head. So if I'm shaking things, I'm on the pickleball court, I'm running around, my glasses are not bouncing around. I don't have to worry about them falling off because this has happened to me before. I've been playing pickleball, Ball comes at me, I jump out of the way, my glasses have fallen down and been badly scratched. I don't have to worry about that anymore. I don't have to worry about running and almost diving and the glasses just flying off. With these straps, I feel secure that my glasses are right where I want them to be and I can focus on what I'm really after, which is the exercise, the sport, and having a good time. This 3M trans. And we are back live. Hi, I'm TJ Walker. This is the TJ Walker Success Channel. My colleague and our executive producer, Ben, is with us. Ben, we're about to go live on Amazon, which is, this will now be, I believe, our, our, our fifth time going live on Amazon. We went on last week, really, for the first time. And I know when I first heard about this about four months ago, I thought, well, this seems incredible because I go on Amazon and it's the number one sales platform in the world, at least in the United States and non-China. They they sell not only more books than anything, but they sell more than any other stuff, I think, other than Walmart, if you count Walmart's in-person sales. And they have celebrities like, uh, like Martha Stewart, Paris Hilton doing lives there, other other famous TV stars, movie stars comedians hawking things. Uh, they're not going to let me do that. I'm not famous like those people. Well, it turns out they do. If you, there's sort of a minimum threshold. If you have a thousand followers on a major platform, they typically let you into their Amazon influencer program where you can make videos promoting a particular product that's for sale on Amazon. And you can actually go live and talk about it too. Now, I think this works best if you are actively promoting your live to your own following. But over time, Amazon will promote you too. Now, we're still new in that. We've only been doing this for a week. And over time, you build up. They can actually promote you on the home page at Amazon.com. We're not at that level yet. They have something defective, you know, gold, premium, different, different levels. We're still at kind of the beginning level. But it is an interesting thing because like a lot of people, I've seen home shopping network channels in almost any country I've been to. Here in the United States, there is something called the Home Shopping Network, QVC, which stands for Quality Value Customer or something like that, Convenience. And I've often thought, well, these people are just talking about the I could do that. But I was busy hosting talk shows, doing trainings, things like that, making courses. It was never anything that I saw as a profession I wanted to do. But now we live in a world where anyone can be an influencer. And if you have talk shows, YouTube shows, TikTok shows, you can make a lot more money if you are doing ads, doing ads yourself and influencing in a positive way for products. So why not? So that's kind of what got me in. Now, I have rely on you so often for all matters 
technology related. We're using the StreamYard platform, which you don't have to do to go live on Amazon. You can, my understanding is just use your cell phone and push a button if you're on the Amazon Live app. We're doing it, I guess, one step more sophisticated because we're streaming through our broadcast camera and high quality mics rather than a cell phone. But Ben, can you tell people who are intrigued by this and maybe their knowledge base is where I was four months ago, how do you actually go live on Amazon? What are the steps involved? Yeah, to be able to go live on Amazon, uh, you have to have the Amazon Live app probably on your phone. And I think there is a there is a desktop version of it as well that you can have on your computer. So once you have that, you'll be able to create your stream directly on the app. But be, to be able to connect it to an external source like StreamYard, so there is always a, a, a link to pick to be able to add an external source. So that will enable you to be able to add uh, a StreamYard to, the, to be able to stream directly from StreamYard. But if you want to go directly live from your phone or your device, you can just go live once you have the the live store, I mean, the, the live app, the Amazon live app, you'll be able to do that. And so the way we're doing it is I, I'm not streaming it through my phone. I have my phone on now because I'm going to, as a part of our live stream, create Amazon influencer videos at the end of it. So I'm not doing any live streaming. I don't actually have the Amazon app now. And I'm going to be going into Amazon at the end of this as I upload my videos. And what's the, what is the hardest part? Because you spent time in this. Where do you think people get tripped up? Or what's the most intimidating part for someone who, let's say they're a content creator, they've made some TikTok videos, they've made YouTube videos, they're comfortable talking on camera. What's going to be the hardest part for someone like that making the jump and say, okay, I'm going to just go ahead and do like, because I know even, even for me, I've, I've been live on a gazillion major TV networks, but in a sense, that's much easier. You show up, sometimes they send a limo for you. They do the make, all you have to do is talk. <laughs> Here, there's always that little bit of fear of, well, what if I really screw this up on Amazon? And it turns out, I think I'm seeing me, but really it's showing me from the waist down or something foolish. What is kind of the hardest part about this for someone doing it for the first time? Yeah, actually, it's uh, using the Amazon app is pretty easy, actually. But the difficult part would be if you are trying to link it up with another external source, like a streamer. So that would be the difficult part. And another thing to note, you cannot go live except you have a product you want to showcase. So you you must be you must first of all hide your product into your into your carousels before you can go live. So you won't be able to do that except you already have a product. Mm -hmm. You have already had it to the live. And the carousel is what shows underneath the video image of the person of the influencer going live on on Amazon. So those of you watching us live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and other platforms, if you want to see what I'm talking about, I would need you to shift over and actually watch us on Amazon in just a couple of minutes. We're going to switch over and go live. I'll still be live here, but I'm going to be referencing, as you can see, this book here in the carousel, and you're not going to see a carousel. It's just, I mean, in theory, we could be posting these in the comments, the links, I guess, if we if we wanted to, but uh, we're not going to try to be that sophisticated. We're really here to kind of demonstrate the, the basic process of how to speak about a product, how to do it in a way that's advertiser friendly, that's platform friendly. So I'll be telling you some of the things before and after for Amazon that will make it easier. So for example, I'm only talking about products that are for sale on Amazon. So I love my or a ring that tracks my sleep patterns, but I'm not going to be talking about that on Amazon Live because Aura doesn't make its ring available on Amazon. So there are some limitations. 
They don't want you saying disparaging things. And I personally don't want to say anything I don't believe. So I've eliminated books and products and other things that I think aren't great. I'm really only focusing on things I do, in fact, like, already recommend to people and believe in. Okay, so Ben, let's go ahead and do this. You'll give me a countdown. And then I'm going to try to do something. I always try to learn a little bit of new technology every day in bite sizes. So Ben, tell me, correct me if I'm wrong. I'll simply go to the very top where the A for Amazon is checked. I'll hit the down yeah. button. When I'm done, I'll hit remove. Now, right now it says you are live, but I'm assuming we are not live, correct? Yes, we are not live because we have not started it on the app. Yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna add us on to make us live. And all I yeah. have to do is hit remove and then we will be off. Exactly. Okay. Now for the order, I sent you uh, we typically just show you everything we're doing in real time here so you can figure out how to do it yourself without having to guess. I sent Ben pictures of five products I'll be promoting today on Amazon Live. They all happen to be books. Ben, do you want to tell me the order you have, or is it easy enough for when you see me hold it to post it in the carousel? Yes, I have this order. Uh, the first book is The More of Less. Okay, got it. That's the order. Then the second one is The, the Miracle Morning. Got it. Happiness equation. Yes. Exactly. Attention span and hidden yeah. habits of gene. Okay. So we're in the correct yeah. order. Great. All right. So we're going to dive right in. And here's where it gets a little bit meta. We have a live show here that we've been doing since 9 a.m. Eastern today. We're going to continue this till noon. Within this show, it, this whole show is on demand. It will be available on demand on YouTube and all social media as soon as we're done. Now we're going to do a an, a show just, not just for, in addition, we're going to be doing it for Amazon Live. So there'll be that show within the broader show. Once I go through the basic products on Amazon, I'm going to do another show within that show where I then actually create my Amazon influencer videos on demand on the Amazon live. So we'll be going sort of three levels in there. I hope that's not too much, but I am a big believer of you've got to be as efficient as possible, kill as many birds with one stone as possible, because with any of these things, you don't really know if you're going to make any money or how much money. If you're taking a lot of different bites at the apple where any one of them could end up being profitable, then you still win. I mean, in theory, maybe no one buys a single one of these products today, but <clears throat> something in this video <clears throat> really plays well on some of the social media platforms we're on. It gets tons and tons of views and we get advertising revenue. You never really know. So I'm just trying to spread bets throughout. Okay, let's get ready. Let me get a little more water <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and do this. And I've already placed my mic on here, not for Amazon, but it's for the videos that I will be doing for Amazon Influencer after we finish the live part. Okay. And so, Ben, I will take you off camera, and then, but you'll give me a countdown verbally, a three, two, one, so I know that I'm live on Amazon, and I'll take myself off today at the end. Okay. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Hello and welcome. I'm TJ Walker. This is the TJ Walker Success Channel right here on Amazon. It's great to be here live with you on Amazon Live. We got a lot of exciting books here for you today. On my regular TJ Walker Success Channel, we try to help people become more successful in life through improving communication skills and personal development skills. So I want to share with you books from my own library. These are books that I've bought with my own money, read, marked up with notes that were useful to me, and already recommend to other people on a regular basis. The first one I want to point out is 
The More of Less by Joshua Becker. Joshua is seen as a real thought leader in the whole simplicity movement, the minimalism movement. He makes fantastic videos himself. You may want to check him out on social media, but this, this book really opens people's eyes to the possibility of living life, not at a smaller level, but at actually a grander level that isn't all about more stuff. Now, I've been into minimalism for about five years and came across his book fairly early on in my journey there on this. And I got to tell you, made a huge impact on me. I sold a big house, sold a lot of material, a lot of stuff, downsized. Again, it helped me create a bigger life, not a smaller life, but a, a bigger life because it frees up my time, my mental space, not to mention resources to focus on what truly matters in life, more experiences and time spent in relationships with people who are important to me, my family. So I would highly recommend you check out The More of Less. If you have any thoughts about, hmm, maybe this whole rat race of work more to hours in a job I don't really like to make more money, to buy more stuff, to impress people I don't like, and to fill up my backyard and garage with more clutter and closets with clutter. Maybe that's not really the secret to success and happiness in life. If you maybe ever had that thought, I would highly recommend you check out this book. And it's right available on in the carousel right now. So with one click, you can go ahead and purchase the book. The next book that has meant something to me, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Now, Hal, this is in no way disparaging to him. He's not your typical sort of PhD from Stanford. He's more of someone who just came from the world of, of personal development, worked in simple experiences and testing on his own life, and came up with a whole set of basic practices that help him and anyone start their morning off the right way. It's a bit of a cliche in personal development circles. I understand that, but it's actually true. I know for myself, I have a set routine in the morning, things I do. It partially, not completely, but partially influenced by the miracle morning. Just this stressing, having a set routine. I mean, my own routine is I listen to an audio recording on the Ultimize app telling me exactly how I want to program my whole day. And I get reminders to do things like drink water. I drink a large glass of water first thing in the morning. I weigh myself every single day. And I realize there's some debate about that, but I also journal every single morning in part because of prompts found in a book like this. So it's a simple system. It's not, he's not writing at a PhD level with lots of fancy words and jargon. It's got a lot of great simple tips in there. If you're thinking about some aspect of personal development, wanting to improve your life, and you don't want to change all 24 hours a day, this is a great start because it really focuses on your first hour or so of the day. So I would recommend Hal Elrod's The Miracle Morning. Please check it out. Again, it's in the carousel right now. You can take a look at it. The next book I like, and this was an international bestseller, The Happiness Equation. Want nothing and do anything, have everything is the subtitle. I've been immersed in the world of personal development uh, really my whole life, but especially for the last six years as I started creating dozens and dozens of personal development courses for platforms like Udemy. And this complemented my public speaking courses and communication skills courses. And everything kind of leads back to, well, you're doing all these things because you do want to be happier. Why do we want better relationships? Why do we want more money? Why do we want all the, we do want to be happier. So I've tried to read almost every book on happiness and some of them don't really add much. I, I like this book and I can tell because I've, I've, 
turned down so many pages and underlined pages. That's how I know a book really meant something. And not, now, these are my books, so I can turn the pages down. I fold the pages down at, and then I underline specific things that are insightful to me. And there's, and then I can go back and read them and study them and, and incorporate them sometimes with attribution with other courses I do. So I really like the philosophy here. Here's just something I randomly pay, uh, picked up on a page I turned to. Remember, just like driving a car, throwing a football or doing a headstand, you can learn to be happier. There is this perception in so many aspects of life people have that, well, you're either happy or you're not. You're born with a baseline. You can't really change it. I do think people are born with certain baselines of happiness and contentment, but you can influence it a great deal. It is a learned behavior. And it's through books like this that I developed my own practice. For example, my own morning journaling, a question that I look at every single day is, TJ, what are you grateful for today? And I write an answer to that every day. The sheer act of writing down something you're grateful about does in fact make you happier. <laughs> it sounds obvious, you've heard it before, but it seems silly and trite and cheesy to a lot of people. But it's a skill. It, if you focus on things you're grateful about, and you're focusing on things that make you happy, it's easier to be happy. So check out the happiness equation. I think there's a lot of good stuff in there. And again, it's available on the carousel, one click, and you can in fact get the book, or at least go to the page where you can read more reviews and learn more about it. Next book that I like, Attention Span, Find, Focus, Fight Distraction by Gloria Mark. It's been said we live in an attention academy, uh, attention economy. Everyone is clamoring for attention on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, every website. Everyone is traditional TV networks. Everyone is screaming out for your attention all the time. And hey, I'm a part of that as a social media creator and as someone who runs a media company. I understand that. But it comes at a cost. So many people are so distracted and can't go more than two minutes without checking email and text that for a lot of people, it's destroying your ability to focus. It's destroying your ability to actually create. How do you create a great novel, a great book, a great movie script, a great sculpture, if every two seconds you have to pick up your phone? That's a very real question so many people face on a daily basis around the world. This book has a lot of great tips on how to restore balance. No one's saying you have to throw away your cell phone or unplug from the internet and go back to living in a long cabin. That's not Gloria's message, but she does come up with many, many tips and specific things to increase your awareness of really how bad the problem is, but then how to solve it. A groundbreaking way to restore balance, happiness, and productivity. Because that is the real problem with the modern attention economy and cell phones being everywhere is people's happiness going down, especially with adolescence. And I'll be talking about that in another book later this week. But there's just so much research how of how giving attention in so many different places on cell phones, computers, laptops, tablets, fracturing our attention. And the result is very clear. Big media companies are making more money than ever. But you and other individuals are losing your ability to be productive and to be happy. So if you want to get some sense of how to combat this, I do urge you to check out Attention Span. And it's available right here below in the carousel right now. So check it out. The next book that I like that I've just pulled off my personal library shelf right over here is called The Hidden Habits of Genius. Beyond Talent, 
IQ and Grit, Unlocking the Secrets of Greatness by Craig Wright. And Craig looks at so many individuals who, and I see that I read this, I finished it March 27, 2021. I then went back and sort of reread everything I underlined in June of 2022, and I still keep it right here on my library and like to refer to it from time to time. There's so many interesting tidbits where they go into the history, whether it's Steve Jobs, the fact that he had a high school GPA of 2.65. We knew he was a high school or a college dropout, but I had no idea that he had a high school GPA of 2.65. We live in a, a modern culture that typically says someone like that is going to be working as a fast food busboy the rest of his life. But he found his passion, he found his niche, and he dove all in. And other interesting tidbits, Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba, uh, took the Geico, it's the Chinese National Education Exam. He scored 19 out of 120 on a math section, which is a ridiculously horrible score. And yet he became one of the most, if not the most successful entrepreneur in China ever. Walt Disney was a below average student and often fell asleep in class. Picasso couldn't remember the letters of the alphabet in sequence. And yet the author goes into vivid detail about how these people came became successful. And it's not the typical way of just study hard, get into a good school, keep your nose to the grindstone. So if you're interested in the habits of genius, and hey, we all like to think we're geniuses at some level, right? We all like to reach genius level in our profession, in our career. And it is extraordinarily motivating learning about how some of the most successful people in history, you know, they're the Van, the Van Gogh Starry Night. Van Gogh's personal story, uh, bizarrely compelling. He goes into that as well. So if you're interested in learning from some of the most famous entrepreneurs, experts, authors in the world, I do recommend The Hidden Habits of Genius by Craig Wright. And it's available right there in the carousel. Now, I do want to thank all of our friends on, on Amazon and Amazon Live joining us today. Ben, since I don't have my Amazon app open right now, I can't see. So I am relying on you to... Tell me if we if anyone does come in and leave a comment on Amazon. And I'm, I'm assuming that you are reviewing that, correct? Great. Okay, so now what I want to do, and this is sort of a little extra for our friends on Amazon, Amazon Live, is I want to do sort of a quick summary again of the very same books in case you're joining us live and you missed that. But I'm going to do sort of two things at once. I'm here to talk to you on Amazon Live. But I'm also going to be making short little videos about these very same products and recording it and because these will be videos that will be uploaded onto my Amazon storefront. And some of those videos could then show up anywhere. They could show up right there on the product page. So I'm going to take just a second. I've already turned my cell phone on. I have it on a tripod next to my regular camera that you, where you're seeing the feed. <clears throat> I have a special microphone just for my camera. And I'm going to be making some short form videos in reverse order of the same products. <clears throat> but these will be short, typically 15 seconds for people who are in a hurry. And I have it on photo. I got to put it on video. <laughs> And what I'm doing is I'm adjusting my remote control so I don't have to reach up to the, to the phone and turn it off and on every time. Okay, and I see the blue light flashing, meaning it's working. The hidden habits of genius. They're not exactly what you think. Did you know that Steve Jobs had a 2.65 grade point average in high school and yet look what he accomplished. 
learn more about succeeders. Okay, so that's one where I don't typically do this, and apologies to our friends joining us on Amazon Live. I just used a word that doesn't exist, succeeders, what is that? <laughs> I try to do my ads, my product reviews in one take, and I'd say I'm successful most of the time, but every once in a while, you just make a blunder, as I did. So I want to be transparent with you there. The hidden talents of genius, the hidden habits of genius. What really makes someone successful? This book, The Hidden Habits of Genius, lays it all out. You'll be fascinated by what you read. Okay, so that's the first one. And note, uh, those of you watching live, we are here live. I made a mistake there in the title, and I just restated it and got it right. I think that the gist still comes across. It still works. Attention span. We live in a time where everyone is grabbing for our attention. Every social media post, video, audio, ads everywhere. Gloria Mark shows us how to get back control of our own attention. Okay. <clears throat> the happiness equation. What do we all want? We all want the same, but we want happiness. The happiness equation is filled with insights, information, and habits for you to become a happier person. Check it out. And again, I'm doing these for about 15 seconds long because that just makes it more flexible, versatile to be used and placed in a lot of different places. Plus, if you have been joining me on Amazon Live, it's just a quick little refresher for things you've already heard me talking about. The Morning Miracle by Hal Elrod. This book is simple, it's clear, and it's great at motivating you to do just a handful of things the right way before 8 a.m. It'll make you the rest of your day. And then finally, the more of less. The More of Less by Joshua Becker. This book is instrumental in getting more people to throw more junk out of their house than anything else. He is a true evangelist for the minimalist movement. Okay, so that is it for Amazon Live today. I'm TJ Walker. Thanks so much. If you're watching this on demand, if you have a question about the product, then leave a comment and better yet, just go to the product page and you can check out, learn more about the products there. Thanks so much for joining me. Until next time, I will see you online. Take care. Okay, so now I, I'm hoping I did that the right way. Those of you uh, with us on YouTube and all the other social media platforms. So I just took myself off of, of Amazon. Now, Ben, I think you're with me. So I, I hit delete. I now have a message though. It says StreamYard is sharing your screen and audio. I'm assuming it means to the other platforms and it's not still streaming to Amazon. Can you confirm to me that I'm no longer streaming on Amazon? I can't hear you, Ben. I can't see you. I'm going to add, I'm going to add Ben to our screen. Ben, can you confirm I did that the right way? Yes. I was okay, calling on Amazon and you did it well. Okay, great. So again, those of you joining us, uh, maybe for the first time, we're, we're trying to do a couple of different things here. We have a live show here where I answer your questions about all aspects of communication, including how do you speak more effectively on camera and do things like being an influencer? As a part of that, as a part of sort of a, a test for you, I've joined the Amazon Influencer Program and I've been making Amazon Influencer videos and sharing with you my journey on that. And I've done close to 600 videos now. And going even deeper into Amazon in just the last week, 
we've started doing Amazon Live, where it's a live broadcast. People can watch me right on Amazon on my storefront. And with one click, any product I'm talking about, like a book, it shows up in what they call their carousel. And I'm going to take my mic off now. It shows up in what they call their... Ooh, now I see my mic was off, so I might have to redo everything we just did. <laughs> that is a bit disconcerting. <laughs> there, we'll check that. You know what? Let me just check that right now. Sure enough. Wow. And folks, that's showbiz. I could have sworn I turned my microphone on. And in fact, I have, let's see if it, if they're all like that. Um, I'm checking my, what I'm look, looking at are the videos on my cell phone. Create this book. Yeah, so all five of those videos now have to be redone, <laughs> which fortunately we gave ourselves a little extra time today. But that's a part of being a, a video creator is there are going to be screw ups. There are going to be blunders. That is the nature of video production. It's simply a lot more difficult, higher percentage chances of error than if you're writing a blog. You know, you write a blog, you delete, you backspace, you cut and paste, and you can remove something. So text is in many ways much, much easier to deal with than video. But because of that, there's a lot less competition. I always, everyone says they like competition and yet nobody really does. The, uh, the great Facebook investor, tech investor, Peter Thiel, not talking about his politics, but he is a great investor. He wrote a whole book on how the fact that, you know, really great businesses don't want competition. Google has no competition now. <laughs> And what you're looking for is some unfair advantage. And I, that does resonate with me. I do think that you're always better off if you can figure out a way of competing where you're doing something unique and different. That is what I like about video is so many people are afraid to do it. So what I'm going to do now is redo and they were only 15 seconds long and there's only five so it, it won't take that long it's not like i lost a day of, of video production but i won't kid you it's it it still is annoying to me that i did that so now i am going to you know what let me just test now i'm testing the audio want to make sure it really works Now I'm testing the audio. And it worked. So in retrospect, I should have spent two seconds doing that before we started. But I could have sworn I did that. But that little green light is the telltale sale, uh, sign for this particular microphone. I'm going to put it, I've been putting it, it's a little distracting, but I do put it right in the middle, the top of the tie. Okay. So we're going to do these again. All right. So, Ben, uh, thanks so much. I know you got a million things to do. You and I will regroup later. I'll talk to you later. Okay. So, I'm going to do these very same ads. And I hope I don't, can't remember if I turned my remote off or not, but we'll find out. And I did turn my remote off. I'm about to do that. And by the way, if you're with me now and you just come in, I'm going to make these videos, but then I'm going to show you step by step how I upload it, process it, label it, and submit it to Amazon so that it can actually get on a product page. And the other thing I'm going to do for the background is I'm going to take my bottom accent light off. You can see it's a little bit distracting there. So I'm going to take that off because the camera angle is a little different for my cell phone. Okay, and my remote isn't working. Okay, I think it's working now. 
The More of Less by Joshua Becker. This guy is a true hero to the minimalism movement. If you want to have a freer life, get rid of junk. This guy gives great practical advice. Okay, so that's one done. Okay. Now I'm getting a message that uh, stop sharing. Okay, I, I don't mean, okay, that's a different one. All right, so I'm going to, I want to keep you straight, but I'm also keeping these videos straight. If you have any questions about the Amazon Influencer Program, feel free to post them. I'm happy to share what I know. But again, full disclaimer, I'm not an official representative of the Amazon Corporation. The Morning Miracle by Hal Elrod. This is a book that has helped me and countless others really figure out how to get the absolute most out of the first hour or two of every day. Check it out. What do we all want? Happiness. The happiness equation gives tremendous insights on exactly the habits you need to build to create happiness for yourself and not be content with your baseline. Attention Span by Dr. Gloria Marx goes into great detail about how you can take control back for your attention. Everybody is grabbing for your eyeballs and your ears, and it's destroying productivity and happiness. You can fight it. The Hidden Habits of Genius. You'll be shocked and amazed by so many insights about some of the most famous creators, inventors, artists in the world, and you'll be motivated to be more creative yourself. Okay, so we've now redone those five Amazon product reviews. I'm taking out my receiver. I'm going to take off my microphone and I'm going to turn it off. It's a little tricky, the on off button sometimes. There, now it's off. So I've conserved the battery in case I forget to charge it overnight. We'll be ready for tomorrow. So now what I'm going to do, I just take my phone, I go to Safari, I type in Amazon, and I go to my own shopping page, my own product page, which is just tjwalker.com slash shop slash tjwalkersuccess. And it is, in fact, posted in the comment section if you want to take a look at it. I then hit the button, create content. I go post video, photo. I then have an option. I hit photo library. I then click the last one, uh, the, the book I just reviewed. I hit done. It's now processing the video and it is uploading the video. It really only takes a few seconds. Once it does that, it'll walk me through prompts that are, that are pretty simple and clear cut. There are a lot of affiliate programs these days, ClickBank, others I've not tried. But I think Amazon has done a good job of simplifying this process to make it pretty easy and quick. So I now go to your orders since I'm pretty sure I bought that book on Amazon and I pretty much buy all my books on Amazon. The Hidden Habits of Genius. So I hit the dictation button because I can dictate much faster, a few errors than typing. So I see the product, I hit add product, I hit done. Now I'm able to title it. Unlock your inner genius with this book, exclamation point. So I review it to make sure there are no typos, no extra pauses, and no apostrophes because Amazon in their titles, they don't want any apostrophes or contractions. So that one's done. Now I go to the storefront. I do the whole thing again. Post video, photo library, go to the next book. Attention span. 
I hit done. This video is processing. This video is uploading. And in a moment, it'll give me the same options. I realize this is not the most exciting, riveting, Mr. Beast quality video here. Although the actual quality of the video should be okay as far as the, the high definition or 4K, however you're watching it. But it's not action-packed. It's not drama every minute. It's practical information that I hope will help you if you decide to become an influencer, whether it's for Amazon or anyone else. I go to your orders. And now I forgot which book that was. I've got to take a look at it in a minute. Okay, it's the attention span book. Okay. And so I'm going to add the product. Search attention span by Gloria Mark. I see the book. I add the product. I hit done. Take back control of your attention today, exclamation point. You don't have to use exclamation points. I do. It may just be a, a, a bit of a gimmick or a lazy habit at this point. Go to storefront. So I finished that one. So I'm going to put it down so, so I don't get confused. I go to the next one. Content, post, photo library, the next book, The Happiness Equation, done. It is processing the video. It is uploading the video. And it's, in a moment, like all the others, going to ask me, what product is it? What do I want to call it? What I don't know is how significant the, the title is. In most ads, the title is everything. That's what people read. In this case, my understanding is people are already on the product page before they see it. They're already thinking about buying the product. So the, the video can kind of push them over the edge. I don't think the title is as important for this particular video, but I could be proven wrong. That's my operating assumption. The happiness equation. I add product. I hit done. Now I'm going to go to the title. Happiness is a skill you can learn today. Exclamation point. For some reason, I'm using a lot of exclamation points today. I don't always, not suggesting it's a best practice. I am noticing we're, we're about two minutes till the end of our three-hour show. I am perspiring for some reason. I don't know if someone has changed the air conditioning. And, but it since it's the very end, I'm not going to take the time to stop commercial break put on a new new makeup or anything. So we'll just have to deal with it. Create content, post video, photo library, a morning miracle. It's uploading the book. Uploading it. And I do want to thank so many of you for staying with me today and having another fun show. Please realize we are going to start having guests on. We're going to be interviewing communication experts in the world. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be an opportunity for you to ask questions directly. Um, New York Times bestselling authors and other renowned experts. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We have some excellent changes coming in store for the TJ Walker Success Channel. The Morning Miracle. Add product. Hit done. Title. Start your day off the right way! Exclamation point. Submit. Go to storefront. Create content. Post. Photo library, the last book, the more of less. That's uploading. We will be wrapping up here in just a minute. So again, very much appreciate your time today. If you haven't yet liked this video, please do so. Share it, leave a comment, 
sign up for notifications and tell your friends about the channel. Also, remember, we post three new on-demand videos every single day. Make sure you look at them same day and that you do leave comments. Your order, and this one was The More of Less by Josh Becker, add product, done, title. Minimalism is the key to your happy future, exclamation point. And submit, go to storefront. Great, we are all done and it is exactly noon. It's rare that we finish to the exact second. Fun to do it today. I'm TJ Walker. Thanks so much for spending time with me. I'll see you here live here tomorrow. And I hope I'll see you later today on the videos on demand. See you then.